I'd like to call this meeting the Town of Rabbit Planning Board to order. Um, I believe that the uh, agenda stands as printed. Uh, we both re we've all received the April 1st and April 15th minutes. Does everyone have a chance to get people come over? Yes. Uh, could I have a motion to approve? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Thank you. Um, I, uh, one, one thing I'll just let you all know, I hope you all got to receive, we have a sign off now on the um, stormwater drainage report mm -hmm. for Sun Common, uh, the Woodenburg Road property. I have spoken with our attorney, Mr. Lyons, he is still waiting to receive a lease to uh, review, so that's, that element still has yet to uh, service. So we're still on high notice for that one. Does anyone else have anything they wish to share with us? Oh, yes. Could we uh, motion to approve Jim's meeting now? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Thank you. Good yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, one of the referrals is a little uh, complicated. Okay, what we can certainly do is uh, the one for Rock Ledge. They are applying to the ZBA to commit uh, six units, condominium units, in the manor house, whereas four is the uh, unit at this point in time. But they are requesting six, and rather than put the four in the chapel in the stone barn, which they were going to do, they are asking to just put two there, transfer two of them <coughs> the stone barn to the manor house. I uh, know we've discussed this, I believe, in the past. Uh, ideally, a number of us felt that that was actually a better solution to the problem of increase the number of units, but it basically reduces any changes to the uh, stone chapel to a much smaller addition. You don't have to put much parking there, things of that sort. And it makes better use of the uh, space within the manor house. There would be no external changes to that, anything of that sort. Um, normally what we do is we say uh, we have you know, zoning and planning problems here. A couple of us felt, and it's up to, up to all of us, that in this particular instance, that we feel that this would be a very good variance to grant because it would basically, from the exterior and from the street and things like that, it would minimize the changes to the historic structures on the property. Uh, so the thought was to recommend that the ZBA actually approve this variance. So what do you all think? I agree. Does it make sense? It's, so it's not going to... Uh, you no, recuse me, John. Okay. <laughs> so making four units, the other one is not going to change that one drastically. Right. Basically, they'll go to two units in the in the chapel, the stone right. barn, and six units in the main house because there's more than adequate room in the manor house for okay, six so units. Okay. So there's no, no major changes to the manor house None. and fewer changes to the chapel. Correct. Correct. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Did you I thought we'd make that motion. Uh, well, actually, I have a language here. Oh, well, yes. And then I'll, and then I'll, 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 I'll take off my glasses. Okay. The Town of Rangoon Planning Board reviewed the Zoning Board of Appeals Area Variance Referral for Hudson Valley Land Up on May 6, 2019, regarding the increasing number of dwelling units for adaptive use from four dwelling units to six dwelling units in the manor house. The Planning Board recommends the ZBA grant the variance as the transfer of two units to the manor house from the stone barn maintains to a greater extent. The exterior features of the stone barn reduces potential visual impact, which has been a concern of neighbors, reduces parking at the stone barn, more effectively utilizes the adaptive reuse space that the manor house offers, and overall provides a positive impact to the proposed plans. Could I hear a motion to approve? So motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Michael, I have a question on yes. that. We can get a variance to do that and change it out from what's required on that. For that zone. Why can't we get a variance so we don't have to do that gerrymandered lot division? Well, that's in the subdivision law, and I don't, I'm not that good. No, it is in the zoning law. I, it's a density bonus. It's a, it's a density bonus issue. I honestly don't know. I think it'd be more complicated than that. I think it's something we'd have to, you know, perhaps speak to um, our attorney. Um, I'm not in I, I, you usually can change just about anything, but it might be more effectively done as a zoning amendment, recognizing that uh, that way of permitting uh, increased density is perhaps not the most effective way when you're doing historic properties and adaptive use, something like that. 
But it's certainly something to look into. It does seem like a bit of a. It's a cra it's a crazy lot line to yeah. leave on the on the ground, you know, mm -hmm. and, and the record and all that, and uh, it just seems like it's going to lead to future problems down mm -hmm. the road. So and it results in the same density. Yeah, I mean, so, so they, they qualify the based on that. So yeah. once they do that, you know, and that's that. really not why you're doing it anyway. You're doing it to try to preserve the storage structures. Right. Keep it standing. I think it's something to look into. But I do feel it's a bit of a yeah, it's a jury man who they're doing. Yeah. It is conforming. It is conforming, yeah. Oh, yeah. It all, under the current law, yeah, it all, yeah. all works, but perhaps there's a more straightforward, simplified process that could be used. But it's also the applicant's request. Yes. Oh, yes. We didn't tell him. Oh, no. Not at all. It was his decision. Yeah. And absolutely. No, but it was his decision based on that's how the, the only way he could get the, the maximum density on, on those properties. So, anyway. All righty. I think we're ready for our first public hearing. This is Girl Next Door, Sue C. I think we have a little... Oh, that was going to be pushed to the next meeting. It is, but that's why we have to do that tonight, because we did schedule the public hearing tonight, so we're going to explain what we're doing. Oh, I'm sorry, but you wanted me to explain it. Well, you just want to get up, and so well, if I, I don't happy. explain it properly, you, will, happy to. you can chime in. Uh, so, what we're going to do, I actually have a board I would love to show you. I thought I was explaining this at 655. Okay, no, you're, not, no, you're not explaining that now. What we're explaining the is, is that Sue has requested she can't be here tonight or at the next oh, meeting. She wanted to be available to answer questions and things like that. So, rather, and there was an other application to work on the house and a little studio behind the house across mm -hmm. the street from where the greenhouse is going to go. But there was a violation on that property, so we were not able to accept that application, but that's coming up later tonight for us to accept. It was requested, and I think it makes good sense, since there are all three properties, all three particular uh, buildings are on um, same ownership and right next door to each other, to have one public hearing, you know, one notification, one process such as that, rather than do this. So the public hearing for tonight was not noticed, therefore legally it, it, does, it will not be held. But what we're going to do tonight is when this application, the violation has now been cleared up, is brought before us. We'll be in a position to accept that application, to set up the public hearing, and all three buildings will then be subject to that public hearing so that everyone just has to come once for that. I apologize, I didn't realize you wanted me to explain that. I we well, I just thought of it, just when I screwed it up, you could, you know, correct well, me. Well, you did it so articulately. Does that make sense? <laughs> I was that like, oh sense. no, 655. <laughs> Perfect. So does everyone on the planning board understand what we're doing? What were the violations? There was the studio behind the, the main house, I believe, had a kitchen and it was basically structured as an accessory dwelling unit without special use permit or site plan. So it had to be returned to just an accessory structure. And it was. And we have a which system. has happened. Yeah. The building department went up and inspected and was certified that yes, indeed, it is no longer an accessory dwelling. And that was the violation, so it has been cleared up. So we would be in a position now to accept the application. We would be in a position to accept at uh, the last meeting for and the how house. How does it change from an uh, accessory structure to an accessory dwelling? What's the difference between Well, it no longer has a kitchen. To be an accessory dwelling unit, it has to be a totally self-contained, habitable unit with all the facilities for, you know, daily life. So that's what we're going to do. I hope that that makes sense for everybody. And then um, Eric and I will be doing the site visit for all three buildings once we get that set up. And only two properties. Two Correct. Correct. Okay, so since we're moving along right now, our next public hearing is the Children's Medical Group on Five Hook Road. Is that a motion to do that? When we do the other, the other one.
you need this? Take it away. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Stephen Tinkleman, uh, Tinkleman Architecture. With me is the project architect, Chris Mansfield. Um, <clears throat> we've uh, continued the work that uh, we discussed with you last time we were here in terms of uh, pursuing all the work required from the Dutchess County Health Department. Um, there's been site meetings with um, members of your board. Um, we've also made some changes to the uh, to the project as per the request, uh, adding some trees along um, Hook Road, and um, that also we've added a couple of uh, small light fixtures um, on the parking lot to just have some modest illumination uh, in the rare time that the, the practice is open in the evening, just to make it a little bit more safe. Um, we've modified uh, the fence around uh, the children's playground area to make it a little bit more transparent so that you can see, see it before it was an opaque fence. Um, and uh, there's also been some additional landscaping put throughout the front of the building in terms of flower beds and such. We have a model. If you want, we can show that 3D model like we did last time. Is that, is that be helpful? That's it. While well, Chris is working on that, is there anything that um, you know I can answer in terms of any questions that Gordon may have? There's some confusion about that one in the in our documentation about is the loading dock existing and it's going to be covered in, or is it going to be adding a new loading dock? Thanks for the question. There is an existing loading dock um, in in this area of the building right here, uh -huh. and we're enclosing that. Oh. We don't need it as a loading dock, so that's going to be used as a mechanical room that we're adding onto. Thank you. Any other questions for the moment? So we're just awaiting the, for the presentation. Sure, sorry about the delay. <laughs> that's okay. One follow-up question? Yes. Um, do you know what the plantings will be in front of the village? In regards to the new tree trees? I beg your pardon? In regards to the new trees? Um, well, right in front of the building, it's like perhaps there's shrubs. Yeah, yeah, I have a planting schedule here. I can double check those specifically. Again, the, the project, just as a recap, there are um, no changes to the form of the building other than the enclosure of the loading dock, and then there's a new entry. Um, a new entry addition to the front of the building to make it a little bit more inviting and open. It, it, uh, um, it, there's a covered walkway to you know get into the the waiting area, um, um, which is in here. You'll see that clearly in the virtual reality model, of, you know, of the building itself. We're coloring the building <coughs> differently to make it a little bit more uh, appealing than the current color of the structure. Um, but the idea was really to, it's, it's really an internal uh, adaptive reuse to, to the structure and you know, we tried to keep, uh, there are really no changes to the parking lot, there's no changes other than we're restriping it, you know, because it's not striped currently and things like that, but, um, <laughs> Um, 
the uh, you know the planting in the front is simple, um, and you know again it's just refinishing the outside so it has a little bit nicer appeal as well on a, a, a different color palette. And the building itself is going to be uh, you know completely redone, 100%. Um, and some new mechanical electrical systems in there, and, and then the architecture um, is is um, established so that the, the children's medical group's office is you know, nicely run, and you know it has efficient and also has some nice spaces for patients. What sort of uh, medicines can go on? What sort of medicines? I mean, what sort of I mean, it's going to be Surgeries, or is it going to be? It's the children's it's medical. Children, it's the children's medical. Yeah, what do they do? Pediatrics. I, I, I'm Jake Hunter, uh, pediatrician, I'm president of Children's Medical Group, and we currently have an office in Red Bank that will be moving to there. Um, we take care of well and sick children. No surgeries or any procedures are done in there. No labs or anything like that. Well, we have you know the standard lab that would be in any kind of a uh, any kind of a medical office. We do minor blood testing, urine testing, and so forth. Thank you. Again, one of the ideas which uh, you know came from Dr. Fenner was to have a, a garden for the children. Um, so that hasn't been designed yet, but you'll be able to, in good weather, to be able to come into the waiting room and then go outside while you're waiting for your appointment. Or if you come with brothers and sisters and somebody's in get having an appointment, they can go outside. And, and uh, you know, so again, uh, that's what the plan is for that rectangular fence area. Anything else I can help with? Who did the site visit for the planning? What do you add? Ah. Would they like to report on their findings? I think that the applicant's been very responsive to uh, suggestions made by the planning board when they were last year and also on site. Um, the trees along the road and the plantings in front, I think, help to soften the appearance of the building. And the somewhat more transparent fence, I think, was a good move. Um, I haven't yet seen what you're planning on for lighting on the parking area. Do you have something that's showing that? We do. So we have uh, two, two shorter light poles, um, not too significant in height. Um, the 15 feet, the 12. The 12 feet. Again, the idea was we were told in our first meetings about some of the philosophy of the board was to keep the dark sky. So the idea here was to really just keep it as a um, as a way just to make it safer. Moving here, anything to add? No, I, <clears throat> I I completely concur. I think it's an excellent uh, approach to the building. I see no problems at all, and if anything, it will be a plus to the neighborhood Thank you. as opposed to what it is now. Is, is the, it's not that bad now. But it could be better. Is the exterior sign lit? The sign at the entrance? Yes. The, go ahead. Yeah, so at our last meeting, the, uh, the board had requested that we remove the uplighting from that, so we did. Um, there's a code detail on the top of the sign that encases an LED that, that shines down. And, and where, where is the picture mounted? So it would be an LED light strip, and I can show you. Um, it's going to be underneath this sort of cove here. Oh, okay. I'm shining down as a as a tape. So see, you, you won't see the source. <clears throat> Could you go back to the garden for a minute, or the children's garden? There's, I'm wondering what's planned for that. Is is that to be a vegetable garden or a flower garden? More of a more of a just kindergarten. <laughs> yeah, kindergarten. <laughs> more, more exploration. Maybe a few. Maybe, uh, things that kids can climb on low level things. I don't want anything anybody can fall off of. Nothing that would be higher than the, when they fall off my examining table. Um, and, uh, but just more, and, and the concept is still just coming along right now, but what it, what it is is an extension outside of the waiting room to be able to let kids go out, run, uh, you know, play a little bit. I think it makes the, the whole 
concept more child friendly that way and a little bit more of an outdoors thing. I think in keeping with the community concept. I, mean, it, it, I, I have a suggestion, it's nothing but a suggestion. Yeah. My sense is it'd be really nice to have a tree somehow giving a little shade or to that. I don't know what it is or where it would go exactly, but not a bad suggestion. Again, we we haven't put the effort in yet, and yeah. uh, so we'll we'll uh, take that in, uh, into mind as we're laying this down. That's the child group, so. Yes. <laughs> so. Did the CAB? Um, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, Leonardo did that. Um, I guess that's oh. It's going to be real short. <laughs> So that was Leonora did that site visit, and we didn't find any conflicts. So. Thank you. <laughs> any further questions at the moment? Uh, comments, questions from the public on this? Yes. I have one small question. We have to ask you to come up and talk okay. to the microphone. Let us know who you are. And Uh, I'm on Barton CAB. I just have a question about the foundation planting. Did you say that was Barbary mixed in there? It's, I think it's been classified as an invasive species, and you probably can't put that in your plant. I don't think you can put it in the ground anymore. Just you know something to know. Yep. <laughs> so we've aired in that little something. Which would be a good alternative? Any other questions from the public comments? All right, then. Um, could I hear a motion to the public hearing? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Very good. I have a resolution. The Common Project Planning Board here acts as follows an application by Children's Medical Group for site plan approval and sign permit under Town Code, Chapter 125, Section 12572 and 12573, respectively, at Five Foot Road. In the business park zoning district, in the local water revitalization area, and Hudson River Historic Landmarks District, and local on the scenic road, Hook Road. All is depicted and described in application package and plan sheets by Hinkleman Architecture, dated 5619. One reaffirms the proposed action as type 2 under seeker, for which coordinated environmental quality review is precluded. Based upon review of submitted information, including reports from planning board members and CAB WAC members on their site visit to the project property, finds the proposed work is consistent with the objectives stated in Chapter 125 and Chapter 100, 120. With regards to the policies of the town's LWRP, finds the proposed actions as depicted and are described in the above reference submissions are consistent with those policies. With respect to the sign application, finds that the proposed signage meets the requirements of Section 12537 and approves the sign application subject to site plan approval. And with respect to the application for site plan approval, finds the proposed work and intended use to be consistent with town codes chapter 125, 12572, approves the application inclusive of the application materials and plan sheets by application package and plan sheets by typical architecture dated 5619. B authorizes the planning board chair to stamp and sign the above cited site plan upon the applicant's satisfaction of below conditions and the requirements within six calendar months of the adoption of the resolution. Submission of the above cited site plan in the form and number specified in Town Code Chapter 125 78B, except as may be modified to a lesser number by the chair in consideration of filing and distribution requirements, including thereupon all required stamps, seals, and certifications. Due to payment of any outstanding fees and or reimbursable amounts due to the Town of Rhinebrook related to the review and processing of the application subject to this resolution. Three, so receipt of all approvals, authorizations, or certifications required therein or from any other town, county, state, or other agency as required to undertake the proposed actions. Could I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. 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 Any discussion? Uphold the board. Kathy. Aye. Woody. Aye. Eric. Aye. <clears throat> Edna. Aye. Sharon. Aye. Melody. Aye. And the vote aye. So, as soon as you get your final site plan with all the necessary data on it, to me, so I can stamp and sign it, then we're going to go to proceed with the development of the project. Well, thank you very much. This has been a professional and thoughtful process, and we appreciate thank it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, is it the same color?
discussion. Because that's very, um, that's very Essentially, uh, we're re rehabbing the house, uh, but it's before this board because it's on a scenic road, now Rutson Road. And behind the property uh, is the Hudson River National Historic Landmark District, because actually in the area that's a wetland, um, and that continues, of course, all the way, that district continues all the way to the river. But because we're an adjoining property to the district and we're on a scenic road, um, this board has to review and approve any changes proposed to properties along that road. Um, there is a, a trellis shown here projecting from the garage. I think the owners are not going to put that there. Uh, I think that they um, are concerned that when the doors are open, it's going to cut light a little bit. Um, and we spoke a little bit at the last meeting about lighting. Um, the lighting proposed is a couple of the barn style down lamps, two like down lamps over the doors, um, set into the post, the deck at the back, the sort of inset step lights. It would be very low uh, voltage and reflect light back toward the house. And then in the roof of the front porch, uh, we're set uh, ceiling LED light there just to light um, that, that area there. Um, but that's pretty much the extent of exterior lights. There are two existing lights in brick piers out at the edge of the road where the driveway comes in. Uh, and Rogers told me that they would like to retain those, perhaps find a more attractive fixture, but he understands they would need to be down lights. Um, and they would also be, uh, now that everything's going to LED, they're all um, pretty, pretty low level of lighting and it's very efficient. Uh, but that's really the substance of the project, and I'm happy to answer uh, questions from the board <coughs> and from the public. Uh, we had a slight visit, and uh, Eric and Kathy were there, along with the representative of the CAE. Is that So, so would Eric and Kathy like to give their impressions? Kathy would like me to give my impressions. <laughs> <laughs> John, Eric. <laughs> yeah. Um, as Warren said, the, the changes are minimal, but it's doing nothing but in enhancing the scenicity, uh, if I may use the word, 
uh, the road. So I think it's a great thing that's happening. Uh, that you know the place has been, uh, if not an eyesore, at least a little depressing to go by, and I go by it often. So I'm very glad to see that. <laughs> um, so it's uh, I think it's all it's all good, and you know the the improvements. I mean the changes to the outside are just nothing but improvements. Uh, you will see the deck slightly from, from the road, but only slightly, and it's certainly not a, a, a kind of major change. So. Would, would you care to add anything to that? I know, I need to yeah. Yeah. yeah, I would. Thank you very much, gentlemen, because clearly this was a, a place that needed attention. I think this is sensitive and smart and um, it's a wonderful addition, so thank you very much. Would the CAB like to comment? Okay. Um, again, we didn't see any conflicts. I'll back up some. Um, felt that all the additions and changes on the outside were completely in keeping with the existing structures and the landscape. Um, and it, it looks nice. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions from members of the board? Questions or comments from members of the public? Yes. Do you want to get up? Yeah, yeah. we do. Okay. You will be immortalized. I'm Pat Kuhn. I'm at 30 Matt Rutzen Road. I have one question and one compliment. I am thrilled. I've lived in my house for 34 years, and I've seen that house deteriorate. And I am so thrilled that somebody's going to love that house mm -hmm. again. And I thank the board, and I especially thank my new neighbors. Um, currently, there's a light between those two windows. Oh, Is the that exterior? Yeah, the exterior. Yeah, that one's here. OK, that's all I want to know. That's it. That's it. Keep it simple. Congratulations. Any comments? Jim. Well, I didn't see a, a copy of the lighting you're proposing. Right, we were just talking about it this evening. I have to get you this. If you can just keep it so we have it in the file. I will. Okay. Nice. Any other comments? Good, I hear a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Very good. As luck would have it, I have a resolution. Exactly. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> the Town of Primary Planning Board hereby asks as follows in the application for Hudson Valley Country LLC. Roger Glenn and Brian Engel for site plan approval on the package of the 12572 at 28 Mount Rutson Road. We reaffirm the closed action as type 2 under seeker, which coordinated environmental quality review is precluded. Based upon the submitted information, including reports from the planning board members and the CABWC members on their site visit to the property, finds the proposed work is consistent with the objective stated in Chapter 125 and Chapter 120. With regards to the policies of the town's LWRP, finds the proposed actions as depicted and are described in the above reference submissions are consistent with those policies. With respect to the application for site plan approval, finds the proposed work and intended use to be consistent with Town Code Chapter 125-72 and approve the application inclusive of the application materials and plan sheets by Warren Temple Smith Architects LLC dated November 16, 2018, subject to the following. Request that the applicant provide an example of the code compliant exterior lighting to be installed on the home prior to stamping sign as referenced above, as referenced below, so the information is retained in the town project file. B. Authorizes the planning board chair to stamp and sign the above cited site plan on the applicant's satisfaction <coughs> below conditions and the requirements within six calendar months of the adoption of the resolution. Submission of the above cited site plan in the form and number specified within town chapter 125-718. Payment of any outstanding fees and a reimbursable amounts to the town of Rhinebeck related to the review and processing of applications subject to this resolution. Receipt of all approvals, authorizations, or certifications required herein, or from any other town, county, state, or other agency as required to undertake the proposed actions. Can I have a motion to approve? Second. 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 I will pull the board. Edna. Aye. Sharon. Aye. Melody. Aye. Kathy. Aye. Woody. Aye. Eric. Aye. And I vote aye. Or if we assume that the uh, option two is now option one? The only option now. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay, our final public hearing. Brian and Susan Rowan, 5 Portrait Drive. Site plan review and approval. Replacing existing barn shed on same footprint. Representing 
Brian and Susan Rowan, and I live at 55 Orchard Drive. Um, this is an application to replace an existing barn slash shed, and actually on the side of the house, on the side of the Corning Street, with a uh, with a replacement shed that will sit on the same footprint, uh, not be any larger in size, and the eaves will be the same. But um, they want to raise the roof, so they have um, the ability to stand upstairs. Right now, the dotted line here represents the roof, so it's really just a very low attic. Um, their thought is that they're going to rebuild this building because it's a fairly expensive proposition. They might as well be able to stand upstairs. So you see here, there's a door, a little balcony in the back, um, so that's the height. So we're basically proposing to raise the ridge six foot, three and a half inches, um, which is going to obviously change the portion of the building. Um, but other than that, there'll still be an entrance um, from the house side, which is the east side, um, into the lower level, the workshop area, a door that accesses a stair that goes to the upper level, and upstairs, because of the eaves coming down, it's sort of a cruciform space. Um, it's going to be closet, it's really storage, there's only going to be electricity in the building, no plumbing. There's no intention to use it as any kind of accessory dwelling or even an office. Um, it's really just, if we're going to rebuild it, let's give it a little more utility upstairs and a proposed balcony on the uh, west side looking toward the river. Um, there were some other drawings, including I think I sent you a demo photo on my five, which, which one would you like? helps, um, why don't we look at that one, helps understand. This is looking down Corning Street from above the intersection with Orchard. This is the existing house that Brian and Susan have there at 55, and this is the existing um, shed. Uh, she was sort of a Dark red siding, green roof, um, and uh, in fairly poor condition. Uh, we reviewed the uh, records of the historic district, and that building is not even um, listed on the property card from the inventory was done um, back in the uh, late 70s, early 80s. Um, so it's not contributing, and um, so the State Historic Preservation Office indicated that they had no objection to taking it down and hoped that its replacement would be more in keeping with the, uh, the house and the immediate surroundings. Um, so the next uh, uh, image photo on the eye shows the proposed building here, um, replacing it, which again is, is a steeper roof with the same footprint, and uh, it's giving Brian's a little more utility in the structure. Um, so that's sort of a before and after, if you will, of that um, of that proposal. And uh, Brian is here, so I don't know if you want to chime in and add anything at this point, or uh, uh, sir. What sort of roofing material is going to be? It's going to be architectural asphalt. Okay. Who did the site visit for this one? Melody and Edna. Well, the um, edition, 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 edition. Which, uh, uh, I uh, took some photos while I was there. Uh, and, uh, they're on both sides of this page. So on the uh, top photo, you can see the existing barn, a, a close-up of the existing barn. And then below that, you can see the house. And what we were told on site is that the colors of the new structure <coughs> would be similar to the house, which is a very light gray, I believe, with yes. white trim. The, um, if you could go to the new um, barn, you can see that image on the screen. Right. Uh, no, the other one that shows the whole new structure. Oh, just the, uh, the plan, the cross section? No, the, the, it just had a uh, red right up there. The red right. oh. Of the new structure. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to make the point that the new structure will look, will feel, more massive than the existing barn because of the steeper roof, which you said is about six feet yes. higher, mm -hmm. and the dormer. Right. Um, I don't, I'm not saying that that's an issue or a problem, but it is certainly a fact. Yes. Um, on the reverse 
side of my set of photos, you will see a retaining wall uh, that is on the west and the south sides of the existing structure, which will need, uh, as we discussed on site, to be completely taken down and restored. Is that correct, Warren? Well, so one of the things we discussed with site was whether we could move the building slightly to, um, because we obviously don't want to undermine the retaining wall or disturb the neighbor's garage. Um, and um, they indicated there was a septic, existing septic between the house and the, the barn that we don't want to disturb. Uh, Brian has told me that he actually thinks he can move the building three feet from the west property line to um, minimize disturbing the existing retaining walls. In fact, we can even use the walls as a form against which to pour a new foundation wall. But certainly, we have no desire to undermine, either for Brian Susan's sake or the neighbor's sake, the existing walls, which are sort of a series poured next to each other as it steps down the hill. Um, so that's the thought there. We also discussed whether the building could be moved back slightly um, from the south property line, where there's a retaining wall. <coughs> Uh, Brian confirmed that he does want to rebuild that retaining wall and, and make it more attractive in the process. Um, whether we could also move the building a foot or two away from that to the north, I think they're open to doing that. It's, as you know, it's a very tight site, obviously, as everything in Rikeland is, um, and we want to minimize disturbance to the existing structures, but the intent is to rebuild the retaining wall along the street. And I, if I misspoke, please. <coughs> By moving the building now to the east off the retaining oh, wall. Can you go up to the microphone right now and hear what you're saying? Thank you much for having us. Um, moving the building off from the west three feet to the um, east allows us to, if in future we need repairs, that we have some room to work with. Because right now it's sitting on the, just. <coughs> end of the retaining wall that's part of the garage <coughs> the property next door and also in doing that we should be able to put the foundation and footings in where we don't disrupt the existing retaining wall but actually can take a lot of pressure off it because we got a new structure going in just to the um, east of it <coughs> so that should eliminate a lot of problems in the future with that that retaining wall that's there um, also, moving it, <coughs> the retaining wall at the street needs to be replaced. There's a well there that was covered up that wasn't known about. Um, that's <coughs> incorporated into that retaining wall that's on the uh, south side. Um, that needs to be filled, taken care of, um, and then a new retaining wall put up. And we're, we're thinking of a, <coughs> a stone. Um, the side on the retaining wall that we will put back up. So to be clear, I'm looking at this bottom photo here, you can see that the barn and this wall is right on top of the neighbor's garage, right? very, very close to the neighbor's garage. Yes. Right? So are, we ta are you talking about restoring this retaining wall or moving the barn so you don't have to do anything to re the retaining wall? If I remove the barn, I could put in a new foundation that would not disrupt the existing retaining wall that's there. Of course, if we got into it, it's a retaining wall. It's not a big deal. If we, if something would be repaired to make it, then we can certainly how, how far is the building off the retaining wall now? It's almost right on the body. Okay, and this will be a, a slab on grade, on slab on grade, footings, how, how, how are we going to do this? Yeah. <laughs> footings, yeah, for footings, footings are below for us. Yes. And then, and then slab on top. Yeah. Well, I was going to no, talk to Warren be because I'm, I'm really looking for a, um, a structural slab on okay. it. Yeah. Foundation. So just be and then then so it stays in place. Um, give it a little more sturdiness as compared to just a slab on right. Um, well, it would, would be structural. We have reinforcing in it. Just a little beefier slab that doesn't isn't liable to crack the same. Oh, you can put steel in it. You can yeah, the rebar bit. Sure. Just uh, All right. give it up. <laughs> I know you want to complete your report. And this is, yeah. is this going to be yeah. insulated? Aaron, can you just make the record and complete? Oh, sorry. Um, Melody, you might want to pick up on this.
Office, there was some conversation on site about a possible need for some field decisions depending upon what was found after demolition. Well, we, we, well, yes, let me get to that. We, um, we were concerned about this retaining wall because as you may be able to pick up, there's a, a lot of shrubs and, and woody growth here, so... The, the ones along the street. The ones yeah. along the street. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we did have concerns about the stability of that whole section once those come yeah. out. And we, we opened up a dialogue around, you know, this whatever we decide, it may, there may be changes to it once you begin to do the work physically on the property. There are parts that just don't look all that stable right now. Right. Um, so I don't know where we go with that, but that was certainly noticeable. We brought up the question of where the water goes, and we talked about gutters. Mm -hmm. um, have you made any further decisions about that? Right, so I discussed that with, with Ryan. I told him the thought that there's that small area grass patch just to the north of the structure. Um, and we could channel water there as opposed to just dump it back toward the house. Or so that it runs down the street, which is the, and then you pitch it to... It will eventually work its way, of course. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but it will be on the property itself. So. Okay. And, and uh, just, I'm sorry, man, to just go back to the retaining wall. Um, that has to be replaced with the proper retaining wall, which, because uh, there's a well just inside of it. Was that, is the well noted on the plans? I don't recall. No, it wasn't located in the field. It's just as they've been okay. working with the area, they discovered things that I'm not going to. Oh, it's not an active well. It's just an old well. Okay. And to give you a little history on my cell, I've been in construction for over 30, 35 years. So. so. If you look at the house, the way it's being done, it's being done. It's, it's, oh, that was just lovely. There's no question. And everything, everything is going to be done correctly and properly and using it. And remind me again, the flooring on the inside of the building, is, there, is it just gravel? Well, actually, Ryan indicated like a slab on the ground, on the grade level. Okay. And just put the floor up there. Will that be insulated? No, no, thanks. Okay. But it will, it will be heated inside. Yeah, no, as far as wall insulation, yeah, just uh, no, I was right. thinking of just the um, area heaters that uh, punch through the wall and they just get some heat. I only need to keep it up to like a 55 to 60 degree range, so that's where it would be designed to do. And they're just going to be through the wall heaters that are, you know, on the coldest day get turned off. Okay. Do you want I just. I'm wondering, have you had a conversation with the neighbor who owns the garage? Because since you're right above his garage. Yeah, and, and I did call them and, and mentioned that there might be an issue and there might be slightly on our property line, which is not a problem for us. Um, I, I'm thinking with what I'm seeing and you know, how it's built that we can probably put our, our foundation in without disrupting that retaining wall in any way. And then it, that will become their problem in the future if there's something to happen to it. But if it was something minor or we had to fix to make it right, then of course we would work with them to make sure. Is that the we retaining wall on their property? So both. It's like two retaining walls side by side. Um, meeting each other. Yes. I see. <clears throat> so I think we can leave the existing alone and not by moving the house. I uh, mean, not house, but the barn, three feet. And that also, get, again, gives me gives us room if we have to have to paint it in the back or work on it, then we have some more room to work on rather than having to work off the roof of the garage to do it. I guess more from when you're doing the foundation, I assume, the other thing comes down. The retaining wall along the street is is the next step then to put in something to secure that before you go forward trying to pour the foundation for the barn, for the new barn the shed, just to make sure that nothing shifts? Yeah, I would use uh, best practice with the engineers involved in the area to, you know, determine how that's going to happen. Is this, is this sort of a typical Brantwood site? It's rock over there? Is it very safe? Well, it's kind of rock or clay, and um, I don't know the big basement of your house there. Is it? It's, it's solid. Um, um, the shell, the 
sits right on jail. Yeah. So it's probably a combination of both. My thought is that thing well, on the street should actually be left until later, so we're not putting something in and then disturbing it as we're working mm -hmm. elsewhere on the site. But there could certainly be some temporary barriers and you know, so fence and hay bales on it to intercept any water coming off the property. But does that that retaining wall I don't think is going to be impacted by the, the building which, you know directly because we're not sitting right on it, but it definitely is in poor shape. And um, no, I mean, and there, there's some very large shrubs growing out of it, and you, if you try to remove them, the whole wall would come with it, I think. So, and I was we're gonna just going to say that they would be more. Yeah. Isn't there, a, don't they meet? Am I looking at a corner? The retaining oh, wall does meet at the corner, but the building, the building is set back from the street there. Yeah. And that, that will, it'll be tied in properly with rebar and taking out some of the stone block and okay. pushing it back in, you know, so that it's, it's solid and functional as far as the can I'm just wondering if, if there is a need for some contact with the neighbor, if, if you're going to be doing something that touches the property that belongs to the neighbor? Absolutely. We have, if I need to touch your property, then I have permission to do it before I proceed ahead. Okay. I think it's fair to say, I'm not, this is not a criticism per se, but the height also does change the view from the folks up the street. So that's fair to note that by going to that second level, you are changing the view shed in, in the hammer. But it, it, we, we wanted to design something that would pick up on the roof lines of the house. So that it's it, actually the house actually was part of the Astor um, estate that Baker actually for the confession of Baker for Astor lived there um, in the summer and moved to Rhinebeck in the winter. So it, it's kind of cool. But we, we thought we want to put something in that matched and looked like it was actually there from the time the house was built. Um, and that changed the pitch of the roof to make it match the pitches on the house, kind of raises it up. And also, I'm a woodworker, I need some room to, for machines and tools, that's my hobby. And uh, if I put a garage in the bottom, it doesn't leave me much room, but upstairs I can put in my, my uh, table saws and routers Shapers. Could we see the um, the other perspective with the existing building? Actually, we go back. I'd like to point out that looking down the street at it, we can go back a couple slides. If you, if you go to, if you have one without it, that's the peak that you can see right now, that runs along there. Uh, of a view, you're really not taking a lot out of the view. Um, it, it's very minor. Um, you can see it here, there's that roof line. And you put the roof picture up. You're just slightly over that roof line. And it actually blocks out some houses. Uh, that aren't really up to standard. I mean, as far as roof lines are concerned, and just give you a picture of the, the mountains. So I, I think it's you know. You it just does, talked about it being a garage, so you're actually going to pull a vehicle in there. Yeah, so one vehicle. The garage? One vehicle. If I can, I mean, I don't know. It would, when you start woodworking, it's like. You know, well, how, how would you happen. approach it? Pull a vehicle in there. Oh, I have a curb cut on um, on the street here. Uh, this is curb cut, and then this is all been gravel before, which this was the approach into the barn. Can we see um, the site plan? See yeah, that was what, what we were thinking of, we do about uh, two brick runners up and leave the grass, just two brick runners up to the garage. I don't see a garage door. Yeah. Oh, it's there. on there. Um, Is it yeah. Which is like, oh, okay. Yeah, and we have a local architect, uh, I mean, not an architect, a woodworker, uh, John Dillinger from Stanford, um, Stanfordville, who's uh, 
amazing. And he will be building that door for us. So it'll be a barn door to match uh, basically the one that's, if you ever been up to um, up the top of Route 9G there, um, Olana. If you go up there and you look at their barns, we're going to imitate, we're going to match one of those. Do you have the site plan? Have you seen the site plan? I'd just like to see what the access would be to this. The, barn. the bottom survey should. Uh, right. So, when Brian talking about curb cut, there at one time, in fact, the, uh, the photo in the listing for the historic district shows a car sort of parked diagonally this way. Um, and so at one time, obviously, this was a parking area with some gravel on the bank. It's, uh, everything is sloped there, so it's not, it's not ideal, but um, somebody could get a vehicle up here and in there. Uh, we have pictures. Of course, you've been talking about moving it. Right, so it improves as you move the building, right? So the east the access. You move it this way, you've got to go closer. You move it this way, it's more of an angle, but I don't think it would make it impossible. Wait, what was that on an angle? There's an angle coming in off the street to get to where that sliding door is. That, that would still be the case even if we move the building three feet this way and a foot or two the other way. What's the foot to print dimensions on that? Um, you know, that's in the application and I'd have to refer to that. So 22 and a half in this direction and 16 and a half in that direction. 16 and a half? Yeah, so it's going to be a pretty small vehicle. It's going to be for a very small car. It's going in that way. Yeah. Or is it? Yeah, so it's, Whatever fits. <laughs> <laughs> we, do, we do travel some, so it would just be to put it in the garage right. while we're out of town. Did you see when it was built, it may have been used as a car. Oh, I have pictures to show cars in it. Uh, oh, yeah? Yeah, from uh, the 30s. It was uh, a beautiful, beautiful car. Uh, 16 feet. Uh, other questions from members of the planning board? No. Questions, comments from the public? Yes. just simply that um, the footprint we keep hearing in all these new houses, it builds about the footprint, but the height goes up and up often, and certainly in this case, and it, I just, because Ham, uh, um, Rhinecliff is such a small town, Hamlet really, um, it's has a lot of quite big buildings in it now, and it just seems if since this is not going to be a home but a workshop, I'm wondering why it has to have that extra height, hiding more sky, mountains, trees, just more rooftops if it's not absolutely necessary. That's my only comment. I live across the street, so I'm very aware of it. Well, I think we started by saying that um, you know, it's not going to be an inexpensive property to rebuild this, and we have retaining walls of all two. But um, if, if they're going to make that investment, they'd like to have a little more utility out of the building. And so by um, raising the pitch of the roof, they are not only um, matching the roof pitch in the house, but they're also giving themselves the ability to stand. Uh, this is in the middle of that space upstairs, which right now they don't have. It, it's true, there's no question that the massing of the building is more than the footprint. It includes the overall height configuration of the roof. Um, and so the raised roof plus the gable facing the house. I mean, truthfully, it's, it's probably blocking the view of Brian and Susan more than anybody else. But um, nonetheless, it's just trying to get a little more value out of the building for them. Um, but it's not, it's not going to be a residence. It's not going to have any plumbing. Um, there's no intent to put any other um, you know, function in there. But um, we 
you know, I can understand if I were going to undertake a project like that for myself, I'd probably like to be able to use the second floor. But I certainly understand the concern about the height. And uh, any time you make a change, it's going to be a change. Um, the, the red house further down on the Duchess Terrace is, is more similar to the roof pitch here. And in fact, the, at least from this vantage point, the, the roof of the proposed uh, barn is pretty much in line with that gable down there. So it's any time, say any time there's a change, it's going to look a little different and it's going to take a while to get used to. But um, I don't think it's out of scale personally with the hamlet. Um, and I think it's a, it is an improvement over the, the shed that's there now. But um, certainly I can understand those that don't want to see a change. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Any other questions from the planning board? Um, yes, the same one as last one. Uh, if there's any out exterior lighting, um, just provide a cuts of that when you, uh, so we can add that to the file. Yes, absolutely. Could I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second? Okay. All in favor? All right. Very good. All right. The town of Brian McClendon will hear reacts as follows, and then taken by Brian and Susan Rowan for site plan approval and special use permit approval under Town Code Chapter 125. Section 12572 and 12565, respectively, at 55 Orchard Drive, Ryan Cliff. Uh, mm -hmm. All as depicted and described in the application package and plan sheet by Warren Temple Smith Architect, LLC, dated January 28, 2019. We refer to the proposed action as Type 2 under seeker for which coordinated environmental quality review is precluded. Based upon review of submitted information, including the reports from the planning board members, uh, I guess we didn't get one from the CAB, but I think we will move on. Uh, members, on their site, which the project property finds the proposed work is consistent with the objectives stated in Chapter 125. With regards to the policy of the town's LWRP, uh, town board members, and uh, speaking for all of you, correct me if I'm wrong, find the proposed actions as depicted and or described in the above reference submissions are consistent with those policies. With respect to the application for site plan approval, finds the proposed work and intended use to be consistent with Town Code Chapter 125, Section 12572, and approves the application inclusive of the application materials and plan sheets by Warren Temple Smith Architects dated January 28, 2019, subject to the following. Requests that the applicant provide an example of the code compliant exterior lighting to be installed on the home prior to stamping sign as referenced below so the information is retained in the town, town's project file. He authorizes the planning board chair to stamp and sign the above cited site plan upon the applicant's satisfaction of the below conditions and requirements within six calendar months of the adoption of this resolution. Submission of the above site site plan in the form and number specified in Town Code Chapter 12578B. Payment of any outstanding fees and or reimbursable amounts due to the Town of Brian Baker related to the review and processing of the application subject to this resolution and receive all approvals, authorizations, or certifications required herein or from any other town, county, state, or other agency as required to undertake the proposed actions. And also, just, just to mention, this is an application for site plan approval, not for special use proof. I think it was both. Oh, both. Both. I'm sorry. I have a question. Yes. So is this, so is the application before us moving the building, the feet that you talked about at the beginning, or as depicted on the original application? Well, we, we were originally proposing moving the building um, after our discussion with the site, and then as reiterated this evening with Brian, we're prepared to move it off the um, west property line okay. and a little further to the south property line as needed. I think, um, as we discussed, the excavation is going to do a lot. Um, we have to leave everything better than we find it. Um, and if it's going to make it easier um, to build it and not disturb the retaining wall, not to mention the long-term maintenance <coughs> of the west side to move it a few feet, we're doing that. But we're moving into the applicant's property, so we're not really actually making the condition any worse, if you will, with respect to the existing property line. Yeah. Looking at this picture, is it even possible to, to rebuild it where it is? It really depends on what, what's there right now for foundation. I'm thinking it's probably precious a little. No. But, it, but again, the retaining walls that from the garage to our adjacent neighbor, there are a couple of them stacked together. And it looks like they've been poured additively to reinforce things. No. So we obviously don't want to increase any pressure. We want to relieve that. Um, so I, I'm assuming I cannot bear on the existing wall, whatever it is. Yeah, um, and if I if I come in board, I can put in some gravel and allow water to disperse, and it's going to relieve pressure against the existing uh, walls. But I, I really don't know until I dig what I've got. I just assuming it's going to be inadequate, and I have to be prepared to make something that's that's structural both for this building but also for the adjacent property. 
So I guess the question is, uh, are members of the planning board satisfied with that proposed way of addressing the, the actual siting of the uh, new building? I think something should be somewhere in the motion that indicates it. To have some leeway for moving it? No. Yeah, it is going to be moved, so I mean, we should we should prove it where it's going to be, not where it is now. Well, I think what he's saying is he's not sure. I'm well, but it, but he's, it sounds like he's pretty sure he will. Right. He no, can't I'm, build it I'm where it is. Sure but you don't know how much. Well, up to three feet, it's actually because any further we're impinging on the septic system on the other side. Right. So maybe. Right. Can... And and this well, this is a dug well that that's. It's going to be. I haven't, I haven't actually seen it. Brian, do you have any information on the old? Um, it was probably the original well of the structure um, whenever they added it. It was built in 1845. Um, yeah, so I mean, that was probably the original well. And we just covered over. Um, it's a dug well? It's a, yeah, it's a stone oh. circular. You know, probably 15 feet down to the water level and then from there. So we're going to deal with that in the most appropriate way possible. Um, and also moving this, so it leaves a, a lot of issues that could go wrong with that existing retainer wall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it just makes sense to move it. So why don't we want to quantify how, how far we're we doing it? Three feet is what we best best Three feet in both directions? No, three feet just to the east. Okay, and, and how much to the uh, to the north? I wasn't I wasn't planning on moving anything to the north because okay. once the uh, that, that, that well good. is filled in and the new retaining wall is done properly, you got plenty of room I think there to do that. If I need to move it, according to the engineers, to do a proper retaining wall, of course I'm going to do that in four two four four. We're going to try and add a, 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 a statement in here under the resolution and we'll leave uh, after, well, this will be sort of before four, after three, before four. Um, basically, that uh, we're approving the location of the new structure, conditioned on the potential to move that structure inward up to three feet northerly and or three feet easterly as required by conditions found during excavation. Yeah. Does that sound good? That, that, that cleans it up. All right. All right. It's, it's moving at three feet. I don't know. I just think that the resolution. Right. Right. I, I don't want people to get caught in a situation where you're doing something the resolution oh, right. doesn't say. Touch my table later. Okay. Okay. Very good. Um, so moved. Second? Second. Okay. Pull the board. Put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. Edna? Aye. Sharon? Aye. Melody? Aye. Melody. Aye. Aye. Melody. Aye. Aye. Yeah. Aye. 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 And I vote aye. I've known him my whole life. So you'll we'll, we'll get the uh, revised uh, <laughs> I'm very glad that is here tonight, so they will have an accurate record of exactly what I just said, since I don't remember what it was. <laughs> okay. All right, new business. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck. Okay. Uh, that was our last uh, special use uh, <laughs> public hearing on the new business. Uh, grill next door, Sue C, 19 Vermel Street. Uh, site plan review, replace windows and deck, and improvements to the roof. Uh, hi, I'm Michelle Lacadino, representing Grill next door, Susan C. And we're starting with the main building. Is that correct, Michael? Yes. Okay. Uh, the, the building is 19 Grinnell Street in Longcliff, and it's in, uh, of course, the historic overlay. And uh, per my pre-conference direction, I was told to research each component that we were thinking about changing, just to make sure we would know um, exactly when they were built. And with the help of Starb Library, Nancy Hudler, while she was on vacation, and the assessor's office, I have this here to remind me exactly what was built when. So what we would like to do is, um, first and foremost, energy efficiency improvements. Um, we'd like to, we're going to re-insulate the entire house um, and re-insulate the roofs and the walls and change every wind, uh, replace every window and door with 
um, the top of the line Marvin windows that have the best U value. I believe it's U.28. Anyway, it's in notes. Um, and also with uh, Simpson thermal doors with a very high R bond rate. Um, the windows will match what's there now. There are two over two. And there are a few windows that we'd like to change. And I can outline that for you. Um, two of the most important windows that we need to change that will look similar, they will be casement windows and not double hungs, but they will look like double hungs, and they are for egress, because neither of the upstairs uh, bedrooms have an egress window. So in order to comply with code, we have to do that. Um, and we would also like to, could we go to A00? Thank you. Um, I can show you a better picture there. We would also like to oops. Well maybe we don't have it. That's okay. That's the other house. That's the assessment. Maybe it's not in there. Okay. I think it'll work fine for me. I must have downloaded that. You could that's okay. I I can explain it and I'll bring pictures next time. Um, so we want to replace all the windows and doors. And in, on, can I have the elevations maybe for this? And the elevations would be A. It doesn't look like you have all my files. Oh. I do. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm just nervous, so I'm taking that on you. <laughs> it would be um, A3 and A4. It's just easier to talk because I have the demo right next to what's proposed and then you'll see exactly what I'm trying to change. So while we're finding that, um, we also would like to do some roof improvements. Um, replacing, there's a, a roof in the back that's a hip roof and that's not visible from the street. And that was actually built in 1988. Um, if you look on the assessor's records that I've provided for you, that's They'll, they'll show you that that, was, that that hip roof was actually, that second floor bedroom was put on in 1988. And what we'd like to do, oh perfect, thank you. We'd like to continue the gable all the way out to the back where you wouldn't see it anyway. And as you can see, uh, some of these back portions, um, many of that, much of that was put on after the fact. So they don't really have historic windows on from 19, I mean, excuse me, from 1880. Um, See what else. We want to, can we go to H3? I guess I can show you here. Right now the building has um, a, a, a canopy that's kind of falling apart. We wanted to just connect it. And I can't really discern exactly what was there. If, you, if we look at the historic documents, it looks like it had a roof similar to that, but either way, I feel like it, it's really keeping in the harmony of the building. It actually makes it look better. Um, here's one of the egress windows, just so you can know it looks the same, but it's really a casement that looks like an egress window. Um, and in the front of the building in 1991, they added these really big fat columns. Massive, they don't look correct. But if you do look at what I got from um, this file from, from the Star Library, you'll see the, the posts were a lot thinner. Um, so we'd like to change it back to that. And the other thing is, can I can you please go to A1? Sorry, this is just a tone. The other thing we'd like to do is, this is the deck that's there now with these stairs that do not comply whatsoever. Um, we'd like to reduce the deck down, and basically that deck was put on in 1991. And originally, if you look back from 1950 to 1977 in the assessor's records, and which I've provided for you, you'll see that the deck was actually, it looks like, four feet. So it was very, very narrow, and this one was very, very narrow too. Um, one change we would like to make is to remove this deck entirely and thin up these stairs so they align with the stairs below. And that might be, if you can pull up A00, that might be something the board can see. Sorry, the opinion. Yeah, 
So you can see these big wide stairs, they're not compliant right now. You can really fall down and hurt yourself. And this is stone steps that were, I don't know when they were put on. I have no record of those. Probably recently, I would imagine. But we'd like to um, make them line up with the front door. And, um, and you can also see here, I mean, this is the hip roof that was put on in 1988. I, I put that in your document, you can see that. And these windows, just same with the windows in the sunroom. This uh, sunroom wasn't enclosed until 88 as well. So um, we'd like to make the windows that you see from the street, which I don't have a really good picture of that, but this room is over there. We'd like to make that look like the rest of the house. So we would put three double hungs that match the front exactly. Um, let's see where the changes can I point out to you. Better to get them all out now. And I think that's it. Also, we would put a code compliance there. I said that. Um, repoint the chimney. Uh, the entire new roofing on the whole building. And basically, just it's costing a fortune to heat it right now. So basically, just improve it in that way. Uh, one more change, I, I'm sorry. Uh, this is the front living room right here. And it's got the same size windows, but some are six inches higher than the others. So we thought we'd align them all, and they actually still, if you want to look at the elevation, um, and I believe that's A3, it'll, it'll just make more sense. You can't have Italians talking with their hands in these lines. But it'll make more sense in the front. Uh, it's, sorry, it's A4. Oh, no, it's right there. So you can see they were a little bit lower before. At least they'll, they'll still have the up-down that was historic, but they're going to make more sense in the room. And if I forgot anything, I'll get you to point it out. I got a quick question. Right? The, on the west elevation, uh, we see the front of that, uh, which is, is that a curved roof there? Or? Yes, actually, this is what the roof is like now. It's right. sort of too sloppy. Right, but the, the new one is curved. The new one, I wanted, yeah, I wanted to... Um, but you're showing, you're showing the same projected height on the other one, but you dropped the roof line on that one, so they're not aligned anymore. No, they're not, because this deck is um, a lot deeper, like you can see here. That deck, the deck right now goes to the front face of the building, and I wanted to return it back the way it actually was originally in the drawings that I can see from 1950. Now I just talked about the height of the roof from the front on the west elevation. Uh -huh. The height of that, the top of that curved roof looks higher than the top of the curved roof on the uh, south elevation. Yeah, that point is. Well, lower. right here you can't see where the point is because it's behind the chimney. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, I I can't fool Vectorworks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just just oh, this fooling is the eye. This is tomorrow. Yes. And I actually provided you with axonometric comparisons of the front and the back that I could certainly um, bring with me to the public hearing if that helps. And maybe I should bring a bunch of boards just so I don't let Other questions? Okay, well I have a resolution. I guess the first question I have is the one reason we combined the public hearing for this application that we earlier submitted on the greenhouse. Yep. is uh, Sue couldn't be here. Right. And so when will she be here on June 3rd? June 3rd. So that will work for, all, for both public hearings? Uh, yes. Okay. And thank you for allowing us that. And I apologize that I didn't know I had to explain that at 6 30. Yeah, that's, that's okay. It's like, uh-oh, we're putting you on. It's not ready. <laughs> The Town of Runnick Planning Board here acts as follows on the application by Sue C. Drill next door for site plan approval under Town Code Chapter 125, Section 12572 at 19 Grinnell Street in Rhinecliff. Uh, within a whole bunch of different designations. We accept the application and supporting documents as adequate for initiating review by the Planning Board, its advisors, and the public. We classify the proposed action as Type 2 under secret for which coordinated environmental quality review is precluded. We'll schedule a public hearing, a joint public hearing on this application, as well as the application earlier submitted to the greenhouse in the place where there's currently a shed. 
for June 3rd at 6.40 and direct the clerk to undertake or otherwise cause noticing and or posting thereof in accordance with the comments set forth within Town Code Chapter 125-72. Uh, Planning Board members Eric and Michael will conduct a field visit to the project site and report their observations at the time of the public hearing. In accordance with Chapter with Town Code Chapter 9, Conservation Advisory Board will refer the application to the CAB for review and written comment concerning environmental factors. In accordance with Town Code Chapter 118, the Waterfront Consistency Review will the application to the Waterfront Advisory Committee for review and written comment concerning consistency with the LWRP. In accordance with the Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development, 239 Zoning Planning Referral will refer the application to the Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development for review. It refers the application to the New York State's Historic Preservation Office for review and comment as the existing principal structure is recorded as being constructed in 1860 is located in the Hudson River Historic Landmarks District and is listed as a contributing structure. We authorize without prejudice to any information or comment as may be presented at the public hearing and may arise based on both the above study field visit and referrals. Preparation of a working draft and a future resolution for the planning board's consideration on June 3rd, 2019, as will be later time. Could I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. So we'll see you on June 3rd at 640. But will you see me for the next project? Because I'm presenting two tonight. Well, if you're still here, which is which one? The second one I thought I had to present to you, and that's the one that we just came in compliance and we were going to change the windows. I provided the drawings. That's the ones that we had mixed up. Oh, I didn't have that yet. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's all one. It's all one. It's all one property, but it's two projects. But it's two okay. projects on that property. Well, yeah, well, why don't you explain that? Well, you have, we have the drawings today. I saw them. That's what we was, I was messing them up with those two projects. This one's pretty easy. Um, if you could give me the A00 of that page, or I can just use this. This is in the back of the lot um, on Tewksbury, that little dead end street back there. And um, it was built, I believe, in 1950, according to the parcel access, which I know is sometimes not 100%. But all we want to do on this one, um, may I have A2? Um, all we want to do here is, it has all these tiny little square, completely useless, eight by eight inch, inoperable windows. I mean, I don't, this is not a historic building, so I don't know, you know, that we want to remove all of those. And this is going to now be an office for Sue. So um, we, this is the one we took the kitchen out of to make it comply with an accessory building. So this is where the bargain is between the two houses. She'd like to put in a bank of operable windows there. And so that's the change. And remove these two on the stairs, because honestly, they don't make sense. But I have interior shots if you want to see them. Any questions? I'd like to offer an amendment to the resolution that we just passed. Uh, first of all, that the uh, public hearing be at 635, not 640, because that was for the earlier one about the greenhouse. And that the resolution that we just passed will also include the accessory use just mentioned here, the renovation of the accessory structure on the property of Grand Cape Now. Could I have a motion to approve? Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Thank you. Matt, am I allowed to ask a question? Um, uh, okay. Just additional information that some, that some of you may want historically. And I did as much due diligence, due, due, due diligence on this as I possibly could, but does anybody have any, you know, I guess you would have told me if I should be digging more or providing something else. I think you covered it pretty well. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. What's the deal with those skylights? Oh, you know what? If we want to take those out, we don't have to go to the planning board. What we'll do is, Eric and I will be doing the site visit. We can take that into consideration then. Would you? Because there is something wrong with those skylights. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because it's being filmed. Uh-oh. Don't tell Sue I said that. They just look randomly placed. They, they absolutely are. I mean, that's where she purchased the building. So. Right. Thank, Thank you so much. Okay, next, Jeff Baker, 110, 114, Route 308, special, site plan approval, special use permit, and wetland permit, single family valley. Hello, Planning Board. It's been a while since I've been here. Good to be back. 
Hope you're all doing well. Since I was here the last time, I received the zoning board variance that, I, that you requested. That was approved, and that was needed because the proposed home is larger than the cottage that's on the property. And per your regulations, the larger home was supposed to be closer to the road. So that was taken care of by the zoning board. In addition, I've received approval from the Dutchess County Health Department for the septic system for the proposed house. You've received that? Yes. I spoke with uh, Mr. Pearson this morning. Okay, great. Any other additional information you'd like from me? I think in an earlier one you had some sort of elevation, something of the proposed house. Yes, I gave you pictures. I gave you copies of. Again, I haven't, you know, drawn up or had an architect draw plans, but what we're proposing would be a two-story contemporary home. Sure. that drawing, but that's what we're looking at, something in that ballpark. Questions for Jeff? Yeah, this is, this is, we need a, a variance because of wetland encroachment here? Or? Yeah, we're, yes, we're going to be in, I believe it's called the wetland boundary area. Right. Not in the wetland, but right. the buffer zone. The buffer zone. But, but why do you need to put it in the buffer zone? Uh, anywhere I build down there, I would be in the buffer zone. Is that right? Yes. The, the special permit, I think it's for the accessory structure, is it not? If you're converting the, the other structure, the existing cottage on the property, you're turning that in, you can continue to use that as an accessory dwelling unit, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. And that's what you've got the variance that's for. That's what we got variance for, but he's coming before us because he's got the, what, one of the issues is what land you Correct, right. that's what the weapon permit is. Right. Right. Yes. So, can you say that? Anywhere that I build down there, I would be in the wetland buffer zone. May I ask a question? Yes. Where does the water start in relation to the proposed house? Right there, that dotted line. Yeah. So you're, you're right on, on Well, no matter where I go down there, I'm going to be near the water. Yeah. That was one of my comments. The house is um, you know, pretty close to the lake. I don't know that it's necessarily a unique situation. In fact, there, you know, there are other structures. Fairly unique. Yeah, there, there, there are some other structures that are close. Dominate the lake. Um, you know, my, one of the other comments I had related to that is the garage, um, depending on the pitch of the roof, might be the runoff might come over, and, and given the proximity to uh, the wetlands and the lake, it might go directly into you know, those wetlands. And sometimes you know, that roof water can be pretty hot, so I didn't know if that was a consideration we wanted to make or discuss you know, where that water would be pitching or gutters and how that water would be handled, uh, at least from the runoff from the roof. Those are my two, my two big issues with that. Where, where is gutters. the, the uh, wetland and the, the offset? Is that on that map? It's not on there. So are you asking, the, I'm asking where, where that wetland boundary is. It's not shown on there. Yes, I believe this is the wetland boundary. No, that's... That can't be the wetland boundary. Oh, no, no, here's the slides right here. 
Can you see this large dotted line? That's the wetland. Well, how, how, no, that doesn't make sense. The well, that's, that's the flag. It was flagged. That's the wetland. Well, but the well, this is the lake here. Yeah, the buffer, the buffer should be shown on that drawing. A hundred yeah. feet away from that. Yeah, it is. It's inland. I think I can speak to that one a little bit. I had a number of discussions with Mr. Pearson. Um, the property, basically, the, the separation from the importance of the sewage disposal system are supposed to be a certain number of feet away from the edge of the buffer itself, but the specific property doesn't permit that, so therefore it doesn't meet that requirement. The planning, the health department is requiring a number of different uh, requirements for this sewage disposal system. It's going to be a forced main up to the beach field area. It has to be, I believe, double walled. The joints have to be secured. It has to be pressure tested. The tank has to be pressure tested before it can go into any sort of use. Uh, the, the health department recognizes the somewhat unique nature of this, but they have decided to approve this particular plan, even though it doesn't or meet the ordinary separation. So Michael, you're, you're speaking about the septic system. Yes. Right? I think what Eric and I are puzzling over is the location of a hose, not only within the wetland <coughs> buffer, but right on top of the wetland. I mean, it's, you know, it could not be close to the wetland. Well, I think there's a question here because I believe the Army Corps considers Sapasco Lake to be a wetland. And I don't know, I think we would have to look and see exactly where, uh, well, in the front of the house, you're saying that they, you're having a wetland delineated as just right along the edge of the water? That, that's what he's saying. Well, you can see the flags if you blow it up. See those flags? Mm -hmm. That's the flag wetland. Yeah. And, oh, and who, did the, uh, who did the delineation? Quenzer, I believe. Okay, Norbert Quenzer? Yes, Norbert. Okay. Okay. Uh, because the way our law is written, uh, you can't build in a weapon you can by special use permit build in the buffer. We're not in the wetland. <coughs> yeah. It's... We're not touching the, the, the structure isn't touching the wetland. <clears throat> Are there any, I'm, you know, I haven't read the wetland law from yesterday, but what does the wetland law attempt, attempt to achieve? What is the purpose? I mean, does the wetland law condone the construction of a house inches from a wetland? It's never faced that before, so I don't, I don't think that was the intent. No, I don't think that was the intent. Well, we were told that as long as we're not on the wetland, that we're in the buffer, that's why I'm here, mm -hmm. to get a permit to be able to build within the buffer zone. Well, we're used to dealing with like, you know, 20 feet of encroachment or five feet of encroachment on the wetland. This is uh, on the buffer. This, the, the entire house is in the buffer. Um, it's new construction, it's not like, uh, you know, it... It's not a previous construction. Right, so it's, there's no history there. Well, all I can tell you is I've met with the chairman, your predecessor, who, um, what was his name, Art Broad, several years ago. And before this process started, I met with them and I spoke with them and I said, before I spend tens of thousands of dollars on this project and pay an engineer to design a septic system, their only concern was if you can get a septic system approved for the home, you can build a house down there. That's what I was told. Again, I met with Melody at the beginning of this year and asked her, you know, has anything changed with Sapasco Lake before I spend more money on this project? And again, nothing has changed. So, you know, I met what I was told I had to do, stay 
outside of the wetland, get a septic system designed for the house, which I've done. So, I mean, that's, that's what I was told I had to do, or I wouldn't be here tonight. Just to clarify, you met with us in pre-application meetings. I have, met, I have not met with you privately. Today. I met with you earlier. With, with other people, not, but not privately. No, I did stop no. by and I talked to you earlier. No, not, not me. You may have talked to Michelle or you may have talked to others, but you've not met with me privately. Okay. I would have to say that in our earlier discussions and pre-application meetings, in the house itself, I don't recall it being so right up against the lake itself, such that basically you walk out the door and you're in the wetland. So I think to some extent, you know, we're not... It's not walk out the door. There's the wetland. It's probably, I don't know, 100 feet? Yeah. What, 100 feet? 5 feet. No, it isn't. Here's the house. It's about 20 feet. Here's the wetland. So it's about 20 feet on that side. From the corner to the closest point of the lake. From the, corner from the, from the garage to here? That's a lot more than 20 feet here. It's about 5 feet up to the wetland. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 5 feet, like, you know, yeah. it's right on it. That's uh, more like 10. Sorry. <laughs> I think at this point, since we do have the delineation now, which I don't recall, did not have before. No, we've had that. I mean, that's that's pre -application meetings. I've had this wetland for you since December. No, that's our pre-application meetings that we had. We had no. earlier. And I had this on the site plan in December. I can show it to you. Well, I think you'll have to because I don't recall seeing that wetland delineation with that structure that close.
uh, our application here uh, is to Mr. Yasuchin would like to renovate the um, main barn on the property to be the main residence uh, for him and his family on the property. And we would like to make the uh, living, the house in the back, an accessory structure uh, to the main living house. Uh, currently today, Mr. Yasuchin and his family live in the main house here. Uh, he has performed some necessary structural renovations of this barn and this barn as uh, being 150 years old. There's a lot of uh, dry rot and a lot of uh, natural timbers used for posts, beams, uh, rafters, ridges. Uh, so we have performed some uh, reparations to support the structure and, and Mr. E. Suchin has uh, worked with the town building inspector as he's uh, moved ahead with these. Uh, the other, uh, this here, the, the dash line here, uh, just is where the existing uh, septic system is for the cottage that is off the house here. Uh, Mr. Yasuchin has just figured out where his septic system is here. As it uh, told me this evening, it runs through a 140 foot uh, cast iron pipe in which direction did it, did it find? Going, uh, going uh, west. On the other side of the driveway, right there. Yeah. Okay, so that's where the other septic system. Uh, both the cottage and barn structures and this house, uh, there's an existing well that's up by the old cistern that's a little bit up on the hill here. Uh, that well feeds uh, both uh, structures that have uh, plumbing in them at this time. And uh, there's no change there. And the other addition that uh, Mr. Yasuchin would like to add is a detached garage to the renovated barn. Can we go to uh, plant the other site plan, please? Did you mean attached garage? Uh, the attached, yes, sorry. Yes. Thank you. This just brings in a little more detail. Uh, the one thing I forgot, and we don't have to go back to it, but over here on the other side of this road is a section of the property that is the, um, this is an env environmental conservation land here. And uh, there is no development planned on that portion of the property. Uh, thanks, Tim. How big a property piece is it? The entire property is uh, just over 12 acres here. Uh, 12.3, I believe this is about 4 acres or 4.1 yeah, 4.1 acres on this side here. Uh, the other access that uh, he has to his property, and this is Miller, Miller Hill Road, Miller, Miller, Road. Miller Road, that comes out back here um, and you can get out to Route 308 here. Is this uh, old driveway here that's been here since the barn has probably been here uh, with today's speed in the road? Require site, safe site distances is a little. Uh, if you want to make a left out of here, you better uh, have your ears and eyes open. Uh, but there is, uh, and I believe Mr. Ria Suchin and his family take the safe way out, out the back. And there's no proposed changes to any of the interior roadways. There, there are gravel roadways now that are planned and be just maintained in their current condition. Uh, we, this is just, uh, there also here on site is a uh, existing in-ground swimming pool uh, that is existing. I don't know at what time, uh, years past, that this house was used as a cottage. Uh, Mr. Iwasuchin's plan was to have that, you know, it is attached. There are currently first and second floor connections to the barn. To use that as uh, kind of a, a recreation house, uh, have uh, like a home gym and sauna in the basement and use it as just a home office and den in the upstairs uh, there. Uh, and any site visits, uh, I'm sure Mr. Yasuchin would be happy to walk you through this area to see as the interior of this house um, has been gutted um, down to the, the frame uh, in, in preparation for his plan work here. 
<coughs> this here in front of the barn is, is just, this will be the main front door or, or, or entrance into the house uh, besides the detached garage. And it's kind of at grade, so we just was uh, planning to put like a paver type patio out front there. Uh, it is currently just uh, grass. Uh, any area on this property that is is not driveway is grass. Uh, there's not a lot of trees in here. Uh, there's some big trees scattered here and there. And we we no uh, clearing is planned for this site either. Uh, Jim, we want to go to the uh, the house uh, building elevations. Uh, we just I know they're all in this one file. This is just a picture of that cat cottage that's attached to the uh, barn. The game room and, and the rec room there with a gym, sauna here on the side. This is proposed. This is proposed. Yeah, it used to have a, a couple bedrooms in it. It used to be a three bedroom house, um, and we were working with the health department at the same time, and Mr. Pearson, of course. And our new house here is going to be three bedrooms also, so we're working with the county for approval on just running the plumbing from here into the existing septic system. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm confused. This is the barn to be renovated, or this is this the This is house? the cottage on the, on the left side. Thank you. Thank you. Nope, no problem. One, next one. That's just the picture of the second floor. Again, due to the ceiling, there's only the center that is usable. Move on. First floor of the barn and the cottage is right here. It sits right off this corner here. Uh, this is just really an open kitchen living room space here. Uh, here's the entry as you would come in off the uh, newly constructed garage. A library, a bathroom, nothing special. Next, next picture. Second floor of the barn. Shows the three bedrooms up on top, kind of like a master bedroom off to the right here with a master bathroom and two uh, children's bedrooms uh, over on the left side. Stairway uh, coming up there, these stairs are existing in the structure today. <coughs> we can move on. Uh, this just shows a, the three car garage, uh, 27 feet deep. Uh, I think it's about 36 feet uh, wide, 37. And we can go next to get some of the architectural views. The upstairs of the garage is just it. That would probably be a good one, that last one. Um, this really shows the layout of the three structures to uh, help you, Kathy, uh, hopefully a little bit. We should have started with this one in order, but I apologize. And the only existing, like I said, this is all existing, and request is uh, through permits at the garage. Now we can go look at some of the building elevations. The uh, this is as you come up the driveway. This is the new garage on the right side of your barn. Notice some of the features. There are uh, three cupolas on the, the top of the existing barn. We plan to keep those. Uh, as they were in our pre-application meetings with Melody and, and Michael, uh, considered to be a, a historical element that we will uh, feature that we'll keep. The bottom is the total opposite side. Uh, the front door to the cottage actually faces the pool and septic area. So that would be the barn structure, the other gable side. This is uh, the real view of the this is the roadside view, Route 308 from the back. Uh, one of the requests was try to keep on the roadside, or visible side, was the uh, 6 over 6 uh, window style. Uh, for anybody who can see it from the roadway. Um, in the interior, which isn't visible here, kind of the courtyard area, uh, we do not show them. Uh, if it is a comment that we could discuss with you guys, but at this point, you know, we, we put them on any windows that are visible uh, from any cars driving down the road. Are those existing roof lines? 
Are these existing wood roof lines? Yes. We, they're one of the parts of the structure that is actually remains in excellent condition is the rafter system. In this, the other barn, not so much, but this barn, the rafter system and the ridge was in excellent condition. The, the barn on the other side of the driveway there, it's kind of it's pulling apart and, and causing Jerry some, uh, some concerns and uh, figuring we're going to figure out how to brace it to uh, try to keep it together. Uh, part of our proposal is uh, Mr. Yusuchin would like to put uh, solar panels on this side of the house to uh, help uh, provide energy to the house, you know, a, a green type of uh, proposal. These uh, double door systems, which is like a set of glass French doors and a set of glass windows, these are the current garage door openings from the front. Um, Unfortunately, we didn't uh, provide the planning board with existing photos of the, the structure. We, uh, I wish we did, or we did, but um, unfortunately we didn't. But they, there are existing, we are keeping these units in the existing barn door openings that are there now. Uh, so we are actually, the, the posts, the way that are supporting post and beam construction are here in the middle and then on the side. Uh, so we're keeping the openings where they are. Rebuilding what needs to be rebuilt. That is correct. Uh, you know, finishing as the interior, but the post and beam construction. Some of the posts here, the previous owner has uh, previously replaced uh, a bunch of uh, 12 by 12 pressure treated posts and cut out the old ones. And you can see they're on a little concrete foundation uh, that the, the owner before this had. Um, I don't know what's next to here. If there is a next slide, one more. And this is just a finished overview of um, what this site will look like. Uh, these are the current colors of the cottage, kind of a tan with a brownish roof. The existing barn today is a greenish blue uh, that is half peeled off and failed. And uh, Mr. Yasuchin has researched, and we do not believe that is the historic records. We do not believe that's the uh, initial color or the original color of the building. Uh, he, we are proposing a barn red uh, siding similar to here, and as we move forward, we can provide uh, samples and color charts uh, for both the uh, siding, red barn siding. This looks a little greenish here, but it's really a, a gray uh, roof, uh, metal roof. Uh, the existing roof is metal, and we're just replacing it with a new uh, gray metal roof. And that really uh, summarizes. We do uh, have the special use permit here for the uh, accessory structure. For, for the accessory structure, and we have one to go in front of the zoning board, and that one's for. I think we're on uh, uh, the next week. accessory structure. Uh, oh, that's for the size of the accessory structure being over a thousand square feet. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, the, the, we have a special use permit for the uh, change of the accessory structure here in front of the board and to renovate the barn. The ZBA is, the existing house is not a, much over a thousand square feet, but it, but it is, uh, the footprint is about 1,200 square feet. So uh, we do have a, a application in front of the zoning board for the size of that accessory structure. At this point, if you have any questions, comments? Um, I have a few questions and just a couple comments. I, I, I much prefer the way we dealt with the street side of the barn. I think it, so it's really we did eliminate a considerable, uh, Jerry's first ideas was that he wanted a lot of natural light up there and hearing your comments. We did remove a, a large quantity of windows, uh, especially on the visible sides. I think it, I think it makes a vast improvement. Yep. A couple of things that we need to have in your site plan is an official legal document, and once it's in the records, that's the record. A couple of things. First of all, on the site plan you showed us, there's no attribution to who did it and when it was done. There's a box okay. there for the date and the name, but there's nothing there. Okay. And we did we did have a Mike Barella, a local uh, land surveyor from Red Hook. Um, 
licensed landscaper do it, so I can definitely add that. And, and mm -hmm. a couple other things. In our zoning law, in section 12575, you see there's a whole laundry list of things that are required for a site plan for it to be approved by the planning board, different details. Um, topography is important, things of that sort need to be there. In my discussion with Dave today, Dave Pearson today, he was discussing getting the septic system from the barn, the new bedrooms, to the existing septic tank. And that needs to be shown on that plan as well. And anything in there needs to be shown so if someone comes in at a later date and has to do something, they need to know what the different facilities are so they don't end up giving up something they shouldn't be giving up or damaging something. And um, on the uh, site plan, it also says the assumed leach building. You know, we've really got to have a pretty good idea where the leach field is because at some point they may need to have a reserve field put in a new field and they'll have to know exactly where the existing one is that's being replaced. I think that's something to consider. Uh, they've also told me that if there are any uh, bends in the line going, the septic line going from the barn, the renovated barn, to the septic tank, they have to have cleanouts at those points for residential. If it's commercial, they have to actually have manholes and things of like that sort, but they have to have cleanouts. And these are the sort of things that we really need to have on the plan, because uh, who knows what's going to happen in 10, 20 years. But we need the details of what goes on on the property for the record, uh, and just if anyone ever challenges anything that was done, we need to be able to demonstrate what exactly was placed on the property. So you might want to just review section 125-75 of our zoning law to see what different elements are there that would pertain to a residential development <coughs> such as this for a single family home, as opposed to, let's say, some commercial development, something like that. But we do need that information for us to maintain and to make sure that we're legally doing what we're supposed to do to keep a proper record of what's going on. Okay. Uh, I think we're just holding off on the septic design, but we can move forward with that. And Get some approval of a of a design uh, and, and a letter from uh, Dave Pearson on that. Uh, we can move forward with that. And I would ask, and that needs to be shown on the final site plan. Absolutely, stand and sign. Yeah. Yes. And as far as the the topography on this, uh, I don't know if we can. This official way to request a waiver. It is over 12 acres here. There is no excavation plan on this site. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Yasuchin, uh, as to, to get this property resurveyed for his site plan, I know he spent $4,000 with Mr. Perella getting a boundary survey and everything picked up on here that we had. And I know a, a topographic of 12 acres or a large area like this would be a significant cost. And it, not changing any, we're not excavating, we're not moving any material. Uh, I think. I just would request a waiver on, on that um, one item here from the board. You can get topo off the uh, parcel access. And then put it right on. Uh, we could, I can, if, if that's acceptable, we can certainly drop that in. Uh, that should that, that would be good. I think for what we need, that would be adequate. Okay, thank you. I have a question. What's the status of the abandoned road in my square hill of the property? Does the property owner own it? Does he have clear title to it, or is there still discovery right here? <coughs> that falls within uh, Mr. Yosuchin's property, and he has full title to it. He has full title to it because that was owned by the town at one time. I'm not, there was always a discussion about whether that was clear. That's the town The town definitely gave it. That's all. I just want to be sure. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Just a little detail to clean up. I think you mean to say attached to garage, not detached. Uh, on a lot of the plans it says detached. Yeah, we're, we're going to strike out on uh, 0 for 3 on that. <laughs> One of those words. Mike, do you want to distort that um, At the public hearing. At the public hearing, yes. Because yes. there will be a, maybe other people would like to hear it as well. So well the pictures are online, so it would be nice to you know, have them included yeah. in the presentation. Okay, yeah. We, we do have the full National Register nomination right. files. Okay. Is the, uh, the ground floor of the, of the barn, the barn does, does that have a floor in it now? It currently just has a uh, dirt or gravel type floor. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we're going to, uh, inside the uh, post footings, uh, pour a frost footing and put a concrete slab on it. 
Because okay. we're worried, we're worried we don't want any frost removal uh, removal lines, so we'll put a frost protected frost putting in here in concrete slab. Mm -hmm. Yes. That will have to be well planned out by Mr. Yasuchin and his builder. Uh, and, and, you know, especially to meet the required elevations of whatever septic system. Uh, hopefully we we'll avoid having some sort of chamber with a pump in it to get it over there. Uh, but we haven't gone that far. It's, the it's pretty flat through there. Okay, so not a huge amount of pumping. Right. Yeah, it's, it's 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 pretty flat in the area of the house and the co of the cottage in the barn there. How's it going to do that pump is anywhere? Yes. Yes. Could we go back to the previous slide that showed the compound? Uh, what was the this these buildings, this compound? has existed in that configuration for a very long time, is that correct? This is the proposed attached garage. Uh, these two have been here. This is, dates back to the, what time in the 1800s? 1830s. 1830s, and I believe this is in the 19... No, uh, 1850s. 1850s. So these two buildings have been there and, a and very long time. And the sort of beige building is actually connected to the large building. Yes. And what was the historic use of the entire... I'm going to guess it was a... Uh, I don't know exactly what the cottage is, maybe for farmhands or, or something, but it was a, a living structure. I think if you go back to the earlier 1800s, I believe you know this was connected to the larger property that split off behind it with the uh, larger I don't know, mansion. Oh, or part of the Skyler Estate. So, so the sort of beige part of this was always has always been used for occupation, human. Occupation. Yeah, it has it has uh, hardwood floors in it. Um, you know, it it certainly was used as as a you know residential uh, building. We had three bedrooms and two bathrooms, full septic system and kitchen. Hmm. The, the uh, color of it, is that considered in some sense historic? Is there some reason that it's a different color than the rest of it? Is it what's the type of siding on its structure? Is that? It's all clapboard. It's all clapboard? Yeah, and uh, from what I can gather, the cottage was painted about 30 some years ago at the same time as the main residence, because they're both the same color. Oh, I see. You know, so that's just something that's been there for 30 some years. Yeah. So, Melody or Nancy, either one, this is a Schuyler barn, yes. Yes. correct? Mm -hmm. And and it's on the National Register or it's yes. the whole property? The whole property. Is uh, even though originally there was one parcel owned by the Schuyler and later the Star, no, the Miller, right? Nancy later? Walter Stowe. This is Walter Stowe Miller. Yeah. Right. So, um, at one time, it was one parcel. It's been broken up. Skyler House, the Manor House, right. still exists. All of that. Thing. But this barn, per se, was part of the original mm -hmm. Skyler Estate. Yes. Right. Thank you. And apparently, connected. Some yeah. sources say underground, underground to the property right. across on the right. other side of the road. Right. And the carriage barn. There's a large carriage barn that's also. Originally part of the parcel, but thank you. So there was a um, a dairy barn mm -hmm. between this and the right. uh, water source, right? But um, that had been taken down. Um, but I think that the herdsmen and the dairymen lived in this um, little mm -hmm. here on top of the manager and grandmother. You can identify a few details of the information that we're still going to require that we could Okay, sure. Um, so I'll go through a few of these kind of quickly. Um, a few others. You know, see. I didn't see a copy of the EAF for an aggregate statement. Um, so if you haven't done those, we need those. The, the EAF was part of the submittal. It is in there. Oh, I just missed it. Okay. Uh, but we didn't. 
you know, I was trying to figure out if we're actually in an agricultural, uh, special agricultural area. I didn't, when I looked at the zoning map, I didn't see that. Um, so I didn't go forward with that agriculture data statement, but if we can certainly complete it if you want. It's within 500 feet it's of the parcel. Yeah. You're, you're really close. I, I took a look at it. Okay. Just, there are only a couple around. You're really close to one. Just make sure you're not within that 500 feet. I think it might just be outside. I looked at it and I thought we were a little bit outside of it. So just well, make sure they're within 500 feet and then it should be okay. Okay. I think it's close. Um, the big one I think I found um, before the you're going for the zoning board to get a variance for that one existing structure, uh, the size for 1,000 square feet. Um, I took a look at the plans and it appears that in aggregate, all of your accessory structures are going to be over 1,500 square feet, which that means you need an area of variance for that as well. And that's through the ZBA? That would be through the ZBA. So that's you can... Okay. What are the accessory structures now? Uh, on the plan, well, that's that, I'll get to that as well. Um, so on your plans, you're going to have an existing um, accessory residential structure, and then you have the barn over here, and then you also have, and this is, I believe, considered an accessory structure, it's a covered, um, uh, what is this, a um, hot tub over here, I believe? Yes. Um, so all roof structures would be part of that, and then in addition to that, you're proposing, oops, wrong way, uh, you're proposing a gazebo. That would actually become a fourth accessory structure on the site. And you're only allowed three by code. So to do the fourth, you'd also have to go. Um, that would be a special permit for the Oh, for the fourth one. Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. Uh, but I do believe, um, you don't have to look into it, I do believe you may need to get that area variance for more than 1,500 square feet in aggregate for all the accessory structures. Okay. Um, yeah, and we talked about you know the site plan items um, we'd like to see on there, so that was good. Looks like one of the labels for the patio is actually for the barn. That's a minor thing. Um, we've talked with all of our applicants about lighting. Uh, Looks like you have proposed flood lighting on the plans. Um, just make sure that the lighting you're proposing is consistent with the town code 12556C. Essentially, requires cutoff lighting and down lighting uh, for dark sky compliance that type of thing. Okay. Um, so just make sure the lighting is consistent. We'd like to see uh, just a cut of what the lighting is. Cattle cuts. Yeah. yeah. Just, exactly. just like, whatever that might be. We can um, get some more details on our proposed lighting for the, the uh, barn and the, uh, any other lighting we propose to add. But I believe it's just on the barn and the garage. Yeah, we have to make sure it's compliant with the code and then we'll be all set. So those cuts should help us understand what you're proposing. But we can do that. Um, then the um, we talked about, I think, in our pre-application, maybe our transfer bedrooms from the cottage to the renovated barn. Um, so you're putting the three bedrooms in the barn. Um, we are proposing an office in the existing cottage on the second floor. So, and that office is proposed to have a bathroom, from what I saw in the plans. So it appears a powder, a powder, a powder full bath, not a full bath. No. Okay. So as I say, that would actually make it technically then essentially the equivalent of four bedrooms and four baths. And that would be different from what's on the site now, which may have an implication for your discussion. It's the existing powder room is there. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll label it more as a half bath or powder room. It may, yeah, it's, clarify. it's an issue with the county, you know, making sure you have the proper set of permits and all that kind of stuff. Um, then my two last major questions right now, you, you showed a lot of solar on the roof. I'm assuming that was just to show that you want to put solar up, not necessarily exactly mm -hmm. what you're going to use. The, we're doing a lot of discussions of solar in town, and you are permitted to do what you can use for your own use on the site uh, through a building permit, but anything well, we, more... we've been discussing this with uh, Tesla and Suncom, and <clears throat> I'm getting older, and maybe we're thinking of getting an electric car or two in the garage. And why. Yeah, you know, the the solar is fine. I just want to let you know, in terms of, of putting it on there, you, you, can, you, you, can, you can add what you want for your use on site um, at, through a building permit, but anything else would be considered generation for off site, and that requires a whole different site. Yeah, they're telling me they, they still would have to use the grid. There wouldn't be enough solar. Yeah, we, we, we did put that as a depiction. We don't have an exact design from a uh, a solar company. You might, I mean, I, I'm, I'm thrilled that you put it on there to say you want to do it. You might want to take those off and maybe just put a label on there saying solar proposed on this side of the roof or something. Just because if we go back in the future, we may say it's different than, than what's on there. So okay. Just, just for consideration. 
And then I guess my only other question, we've been talking a lot about colors before we got you know, to, the, to the next meeting, was um, why the existing cottage is supposed to be a different color than the barn and the garage. Just because I don't talk colors in the past, and just thought of that. I'll, I'll let Jerry I'd be willing them. to have it all the same color. I just, you know, color's been, you know, in discussion. Um, <coughs> so I was just curious if there was a rationale behind it, uh, I had to start. You know, I, I, think I, I went to visit the historian at the library, and she basically said that, you know, there was no proof of any colors that were used, but red would be, a bar in the red would be kind of traditional, acceptable as far as they were concerned. It may be, if, if these two <coughs> attached structures were historically in two different colors, then I would think you would want to continue that so that one reads as residential, historically in the other at the barn. I mean, that may be what was behind I think that was kind of what I was getting at. Is there a historic green, you know, rationale behind it? Well, I think uh, or Jerry just wants to, uh, you know, do what's in the best interest of the, or what's desired by the local, uh, you know, people here. Uh, we don't have a code that says it's got to be X color or Y color. So if he wants... Our initial meeting like with Jim, and Mike, and, and Melody, they discussed <coughs> Uh, trying to, to find out historic colors there and, and trying to maintain but there's some stuff. No, there's no requirement. Okay. Just, just, just curious why. Okay. Uh, also, in, in terms of the, the solar, uh, is it true that uh, you won't see that from anywhere off the top? Right. That is good. That's, that, that's why it, it shows a lot, so it may be a little misleading to mm -hmm. actually show. So maybe just the label saying it's going to be there on that side of the roof is good because it may or may not end up looking that exactly, and it does kind of show us a matter of what it was. It was just a thought. Okay, we can, we can approach it that way, uh, no problem with that. If that's, I mean, if that, obviously that's, you know, if that's acceptable for us, the planning board should spike my recommendations of the, uh, the planner. Uh, the only other thing I'd like to say, I don't believe I saw, but maybe it was in the packet, was any details on the conservation easement, just what the details of that are. Sometimes those easements have requirements that, you know, they be notified if something's happening. So you want to copy the deed so you see what the... What are these the restrictions are? are? What these are restrictions? Okay, I, I know uh, Jerry has that information. We can right. provide a copy through? of it. Pardon? Who is that to? That is the It's uh, Hudson Heritage. Yeah. Hudson River Heritage. Hudson River Heritage. I, I spoke <coughs> with uh, the director there a couple of times. Warren Warren yeah. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's good for us to have that for the files and just make sure there isn't anything. Okay, okay. we can, we can right. send a PDF for that. Into yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Are there any questions from the comments from the board? Okay, well I have a re resolution. The town of Rymick group. The town of Rymick planning board have rest as follows in the application by Jerry. I'm gonna mess up your name. It's so. okay. <laughs> Jerry Guy. Thank you. For site plan approval and special use permit under town code Jeffrey 125, section 12572, 12567. At 476 478 in the New York City 5 Site Zoning District. Accept the application and supporting documents as adequate for initiating review by the planning board, its advisors, and the public. Classifies the proposed action as type 2 under seeker for which coordinated environmental quality review is precluded. We're scheduling the public hearing for June 3rd at 7 o'clock. Uh, at 7 p.m. And direct the clerk to undertake or otherwise cause the noticing and posting error. Uh, Who's going to go with me? Who's going to maybe show up on? Yeah, I think I'll be. I think I'll be here on the third. But uh, let me verify that. But uh, yeah. Okay, we're going to put you down. It's right down the road from me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kathy, would you like to go? I would like to okay. go. I'm your neighbor. Okay. And we'll do the field <coughs> visit, and we'll get in touch with you about scheduling. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. much. In accordance with. Uh, Town Code Chapter 9, Conservation Advisory Board, we refer the application to the CAB for review of written comments concerning environmental factors. In accordance with Dutchess County Department of Planning, uh, 239, Planning Zoning Referral, we refer the application to the Dutchess County Department of Planning Development for review, we refer the proposal to the town historian and SHIPO for review and comment, and we authorize without prejudice to any information or comment that may be presented at the public hearing or may arise based on both the above cited field visit and referral in preparation of a working draft of an approval resolution for the final board's consideration on June 3rd, 2019, or as may be later timely. Who would I hear most to approve? So moved. Second. All right, second. <laughs> Thank you. All in favor. Aye. 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 
What's the contact information to get in touch with you, or do you want me to get in touch with Jerry for the site? Jerry lives on the property. Yeah, I, I think, think he's, 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 he's available most days. Um, I, that was, was all in the application. Phone number? It should be in the application. His cell number was in the application. Okay, very good. We'll call you in to make, yeah, to make the arrangement. All right, then. We'll be seeing you on, I'll well, be we'll seeing you before that, but we'll be seeing the rest of my June. Okay. <laughs> Just as an unofficial question, what is the derivative of your family name? Crazy. Crazy. You don't handle teardrop-shaped piece of land, which now I own. And then uh, in the 50s, somebody came through, developed some parcels, built a series of houses along here, including mine, which is just kind of wedged up into the, the very end of this teardrop. So now I'd like to do some uh, renovation of my house. Um, I currently have two accessory structures. I have an attached two-car garage and then I have a small shed. Not nearly enough space, so I'd like to build a, an accessory structure up behind my house, but I don't own that land, so I'm in the process of buying that from my neighbor. Um, Paul Madriscoll owns this big farm that uh, some of you may know is the old Gallup farm. And um, the property line actually juts in like this, between my two neighbors, it comes within 15 or 20 feet of the back corner of my house. So it's just like right there, it's this wooded half acre parcel. So uh, Palma has been kind enough to say that she will uh, sell that 0.55 acre parcel to me, and then I can build uh, a garage workshop right up here behind my house. And, um, oh. Yeah, the house is down here. You can see how it's kind of wedged in. Then I can just continue my driveway right up into the back, and my garage will be up there. So it's a simple lot line adjustment for now, uh, just from these two points to these two points, and then transfer that uh, 0.55 acre from Palma to me. Now, just um, so you and your neighbor are both, are both co applicants on this application to subdivide and then you find. Correct. Okay, and you're representing her as well as yourself. I am. I just turned in the document that gives uh, me authorization to speak for her. Excellent. Okay, so we're good to go with that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, questions from members of the planning board? Hearing none, I have a resolution. I have a oh, just hearing uh, none. No issues. I'm not the planning board. Thank you. Um, as you heard tonight, there's been a lot of discussion about accessory structures and the sizes and number that you can have on the site. It doesn't have anything to do with this application, but with the purpose of the reason you're doing this. Um, just make sure you're aware of what those regulations are, um, so that if you're going to go over the 1500 aggregate between all the accessory structures or more than a certain percentage of the size of the house, you may have to go I so retired a couple of years ago, but I was on the ZBA for 25 years, so I'm kind of well. familiar with that process. So uh, uh, I may be requesting more square footage than is allowed. 
But originally when I bought this property, it was an R3A, and I had uh, 3.5 or something. Okay. Now it's been changed to an R5A. So with the addition of the 0.55, it brings me closer into compliance with the law, but not quite five acres. So I may have to go for a variance just to have an accessory structure on a, a non-conforming parcel. Yeah, as long as you're aware, I just want to make sure you don't go through this process and then realize there may be another one you have to. Right, right. And I also may need to do a home occupation business thing because I've been uh, uh, renting a woodworking shop in Kingston for the last 10 years, and I would love, I've really downsized a lot, so I would love to have it up in that same building behind my house instead of driving to Kingston every day. So it'll be a combination garage and woodworking shop. And when you, when you do build a plan for both uses, you don't have to come back for an amended site plan to expand your uh, workshop. Right. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. It, it'll, I, uh, I'm pretty sure I'll have to request a variance for additional square footage, but it's up behind my house in a way that it can't be seen from the road. Um, very friendly with both of my neighbors. I don't think they're going to complain that I have a, a building up in there in the woods. Um, so hopefully, you know, I can uh, I'll figure out what the, the proper percentage is and make a request for a little extra space. Where exactly on 3 is this? It's um, before you get to Pals Road. Pals Road is right down here oh, okay. at the end of my property. Um, and Bowenbecker is across on the other side. So you pass Bowenbecker and then I'm on the left. Any other questions? I have a resolution. Town of Project Langley Hill Access follows an application by. Oh, yes, it's right one. Okay. By uh, Michael West, the minor subdivision under Town Code Chapter 101, Section 101 4.4 at 595 308 in the RC5 World Purchase Zone District. Accepts the application and supporting documents as adequate for initiating review by the planning board with advisors and the public. <coughs> Classifies the post action as type 2 under secret, for which the coordinated environmental quality review is precluded. We're scheduling the public hearing for June 3rd at. 6.45. Yes. <laughs> okay. And direct the clerk to undertake or otherwise cause noticing and posting thereof. Uh, delegating planning board members, some other than me? Uncle, I'll go. Okay. And uncle. Submit my comments okay. and writing. And then share. Since I won't be here. Thank you. Uh, to conduct the field visit and report their observations to the time of public hearing. In accordance with Town Code Chapter 9, Conservation Advisory Board, refer the application to the Conservation Advisory Board for review and written comment concerning environmental factors. In accordance with Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development, 239, Planning and Zoning Referral, refers the application to the Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development for review, authorizes without prejudice to any information or comment that may be presented at the public hearing or may arise based on both the above cited field visit and referrals, preparation of a working draft with an approvals resolution for the Planning Board's consideration on June 3rd, 2019, or as may be later, timely. Very right, motion to approve. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Very good. Okay. Terrific. Well, thank you very much. Thank See you on the third. Yes, we will. Good night. Okay, we have one more. Oh, one more. Two more. Two more. Two more. Two more. Oh. Definitely two. More. Oh, and we have, oh, yeah, and we have one, one referral from the. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for a 14-hour day today. <laughs> I'm here for Cheryl Parisi. I'm Mary from Baycourse. As you can see from the site plan, there's absolutely nowhere for us to put the garage except for in front of her house. Directly behind her house in the garage is a drop-off down to a stream or river. I'm not really sure what it's considered. Um, wetlands said it did not contain to them. The Army Corps of Engineers, um, there's a letter in the documents that I turned in, has authorized us to go ahead and build the garage. So we're just asking you for permission because it's in front of the house. Okay. Uh, questions, comments from members of the planning board? Why does it require Army Corps of Engineers approval? Wetlands told me to call them. 
Yeah, I'm guessing because it's the land's been killed and the Army Corps has uh, now basically classified all streams and things like that as wetlands. So this would be further from the wetland than the house currently is? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, there was one, one question we had about um, the, the distance. Um, yeah, I just... Um, I took a look, you know, online at Parcel Access, Dutchess County Parcel Access. Also, with the Google Maps, you know, Dutchess County Parcel Access states that you know accuracy may or may not be correct. There, are Google Maps is usually pretty accurate. Something seemed off in the distances for the 50 feet for the house and the 30 feet for the garage. Mm -hmm. um, when I measured that Google Maps, it seemed like the house was something more like 25 feet back, and that the garage and the house would actually line up. Um, so, you know, there, I don't think there are any. I don't think there are issues with what you're proposing to do, but it seems like something's not quite right in terms of, of what's going on in the site plan. And with the site plan as proposed, you'd actually have your accessory structure projecting in front of the existing principal structure, which, as we know, would then require a variance. Well, actually, it's going to be... Yes? They have an application to the ZBA for that. <coughs> um, I guess I'd just say, you know, um, you know, maybe the, the you know the information was off on Google Maps. If you usually found it to be pretty accurate, but something seemed it seemed like the two of them, the house is more like twenty five to thirty feet where the garage would be, and they're actually going to line up more than they are. And they're not. They're not. They're not. Okay. It's going to actually look just like this on their property. Okay. Well, if the house is twenty five feet, and that puts the garage five feet. Of that, I would. It would actually put the the garage behind it. And I've actually been out there with a tape measure and measured from the white line back to where we're going to start the garage and from the middle yellow line back to the garage as the Department of Transportation asked me to do. Okay, so there. So there yes. Okay, <laughs> okay but just something seemed off my Oh, I, I <laughs> made sure I did all my little T's and dot my lines. <laughs> So you're saying if you moved it back another 20 feet, you'd be going downhill? Oh, we'd be down in the water. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, then. We should put it there, then. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, this is... I am just to make sure I have this correct. Um, the application... <coughs> Site plan special use permit. Uh, we're going to the ZBA for the variance to put it in front of the house. Correct. And what is the special use permit? That's a good question. I pulled up. I think much because if you get the variance from the ZBA, then you have to give that to your infantry, and it would also cover any setbacks, anything like that. And so it's going to be your only accessory structure on the site. So no, what's this other? What's this the second? second. Okay. Well, well, you're allowed three. You're allowed three. So you're allowed three. Um, I'm not entirely sure that he needs variance, but I'm not entirely sure that something we missed here maybe. I forgot to pick up that. Turns out she's not supposed to be here. Yeah. I don't know. They yeah. told me to come. So it's I not that you're not supposed to put it that way, exactly. <laughs> we, but we welcome you. Thank you. You're welcome Thank to you. be here. <coughs> I just don't know if you need to be here. Okay. I can go home because, like um, I said, it's 14 hours for me today. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm not sure exactly why I was sick. Yeah. Who sent you? Um, I was told by the building department that I needed to come tonight. Oh, yeah. Okay. Your CEO refused it. Yeah. Okay. So but they didn't say what? He told me, no, they sent me a list of everything I needed to bring, so I brought them. Let me go down and correct Okay, we can do that. I, what I have here is, a, is the uh, application for site plan review and approval. I don't know what's going on. Can you check and review the current I'm sorry? 
It's a private residence. It's not a business. It's not a business. It's not a store. Yep. It's not. It shouldn't even be here. Oh, you mean I have my home at 5 o'clock? <laughs> <laughs> I would have missed all this fun tonight, though. That's true. I did. I learned a lot tonight from listening to everyone. Yeah, well, I'm still learning. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a good thing. They say, once you stop learning, it's time to go. <laughs> what I'm going to do, just to be safe, I'm going to check. We'll have the resolution here to have you on okay. for public hearing and whatnot. But let's, let me find out to make sure you have to do it. Okay. You do need to go to the ZBA. Yes, to to yes. Do. And I will do that on the 15th as scheduled. And once you have their variance, I, I would imagine then you need to get building permit. Okay. That's what I think. Okay. But there's something I just don't know. But right. we're gonna have a resolution here. Just well, yeah. Yeah, what do we resolve if there's no issue? Well, well, no issue. Well, so, we're resolving so, the question if I was supposed to go. <laughs> is that what it is? I don't know. I'm What's saying, the resolution. Oh, okay. Just a bad Is she here? For What's it in? It's a good thing water resource. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, now we know why I'm here. Yep. Thank you, buddy. Good thing you came. Good thing I came. <laughs> no, it's a good thing Gretchen knows what you're doing, because I clearly don't know. Okay. I'm sorry? Yeah. Exactly. Now we know why. So when I read this, it actually means something. <laughs> okay. So your time wasn't wasted. No, it was not wasted. No, I learned a lot. So. Okay. <laughs> The title of the planning board her as follows in the application of Cheryl Therese for site plan approval and special use permit under town code chapter 125, section 12572 and 12567 at 336 route 308 in the RC5 Rural Countryside Zoning District. Accepts the application and supporting documents as adequate for initiative and review by the planning board, its advisors, and the public. Classifies the proposed action as type 2 under seeker for which a coordinated environmental quality review is precluded. We're scheduling a public hearing on the application for June 3rd at 6.50. At 6:50, and under and directs the group to undertake or otherwise cause noticing and posting thereof. Delegating planning board members. <laughs> you wore us out. What did you finally? Finally, what is it? Anyone else? <coughs> I'll go. I'll go. Oh, good. Kathy's gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's the field we only have like two more. The <laughs> food well, is a drive by. Literally. All right. In accordance with Town Code Chapter 9, Conservation Advisory Board, refer the application to the Conservation Advisory Board for review and written comment concerning environmental factors. In accordance with the Justice County Department of Planning Development 3, 239, Planning Zoning Referral, refers the application to the Justice County Department of Planning and Development for review and authorizes without <coughs> prejudice to any information or comment that may present the public hearing or may arise based on both the public's both sites, field visit and referrals, preparation of a working draft of approval resolution for consideration by the planning board on June 3rd or as may later be timely. Are there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Very Aye. good. Thank you. Thank you. And I will give you my name and my cell phone so you can guarantee you to reach me. It's Mary. Are you on the Okay. Uh, our last but not least presentation is Daniel Relier Gilmore. Thank you all. Have a good night. Thanks so much better. <laughs> I'm David Freeman. I'm here for the applicant. The owner had retained a landscape contractor who had started construction of a patio, at which point it was determined it is too close to the stream. And that's why we are here tonight. So it is a class C stream. It is not listed as a trout or a trout, whatever, TS stream. So it's a very simple class C stream. We're 17 feet from it. It is a concrete patio with a bluestone paver that we are proposing, erosion, planting along the bottom edge. The patio was placed towards the south end of the property to allow the rest of the backyard to be open for play. Questions? How close to the stream is it? 
17. It's 17 feet to the top of the bank. It's a, it's a, it's not a year-round stream. And how far is it vertically to the stream? About 10, 10 or 12 feet. So the stream, the stream is very channelized. Yeah. So I, I have never, that stream has never come up over its bank at the very bottom. Um, it's a, it's not a year-round stream per se. So even at this point in the spring, it is not. It's not wet. Running that well. <laughs> really? So it, it's. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's an extreme. extreme. Right, but it's still a designated stream, so it's still a type stream. Well. So. Okay, I think the, the real key here from the discussions that we had is the plantings between the patio and the stream. Right. And, you know, there's appropriate area type plants that are really secure that area, dropping off as it does to prevent erosion and things of that sort. I mean, the, the patio itself, the base of it, it's already been poured, it's already there. Is, is it exposed soil now? I. It has its exposed soil and fencing around it? Yeah, so it has erosion fencing. So you have soap, right soap fence it, yes. it, it, between the stream and the construction. Right, and uh, the stream, there's actually, um, there's very mature, tree, mature trees along that side of the bank anyway. So, okay, so there's, there's, there's streams between the patio, I mean, there are trees between the patio and the yes. The key thing yes. I think we're looking for is a plant. Right. That's the, 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 really the site plan. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a landscape so, contractor, so yeah, that's easy. Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll yeah. see about that. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, any questions or comments from the planning board? Okay, I have a resolution. The Town of Rhymic Planning Board hereby asks as follows in the application by um, Danielle Relier Gilmore. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, I know it, but isn't it? My mistake, it's just, sorry. It's just so strange. For site plan approval and special use permit under, under Town Code Chapter 125, Section 125, 7, and 12567 at 287 Mill Road within the RA10 Rural Countryside Zoning District within the LWRP Hudson River Store Benmark along the Road. We accept the application and supporting documents as adequate for initiating review by the planning board of the advisory and public. Classifies the proposed action as Type 2 under Seeker for which coordinated environmental party review is precluded and we schedule a public hearing. Uh, for the application on June 3rd at 6.55 and make the undertake or otherwise cause noticing and posting. Okay, who's going to this one? I'll go. How did it get so far away? Sure, <laughs> I'll walk. You want, you want to take care of the uh, paperwork on this or you want me to uh, contact them all? Uh, who's going? I'm going. Oh, oh what is going? Oh, no, no, no. No, I didn't know what you wanted to go. Okay, wait a minute. That's, that's two out of three falls. Who's going to do it? Yeah, we're just neighbors. We border. We can both walk. All right. It'd be that you're both so close. <laughs> okay. We can share. We'll do the site visit. <coughs> In accordance with Town Code Chapter 9, Conservation Advisory Board, we refer the application to the CAB for a written comment concerning environmental factors. In accordance with Town Code Chapter 118, Waterfront Consistency Review, uh, refers the plan to the Waterfront Advisory Committee for a review and written comment concerning consistency with the LWRP. In accordance with Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development, 239 Zone and Planning Referral, we refer the application to the Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development for review. And we're authorizing the register of the information for a comment that may present a public hearing may arise for basic field visits or referrals, preparation of a working draft and approvals resolution, the PB's uh, consideration on June 3rd, 2019. Could I hear a motion to approve? So moved. All in favor? Aye. I've got to get a second, but hey, okay. <laughs> I got a second? Okay. So they will get in touch with the field visit. Now we have one more item here, which is a little sticky. And that is the, uh, the, the uh, ZBA referral of Stephanie Patrick for 14 foot area variance for rear setback and 289 square foot variance for accessory plowing. Um, Jim has looked into this, and there turned out there were a number of issues that have not been identified for this, this first sent to the ZBA. Um, Sure, allow you to go over these. I'm sorry, where are we on the agenda? We're on the cut cover of the ZBA referral. It's the second item on the first page of Jim's meeting notes. We did one of them, but we didn't get to this one. It's our final. I'll send it out here. I don't see it, but what is it? Cover? It's the first page. It's right after the. This is the first page. Page number two. Page two. Page two. I'm like, no. Oh, this thing. No, yeah, it's cut. Uh, you quickly. Yeah. So, uh, so this referral came in, and when the referrals come in, I like to take a look at uh, the of access to see what it looks like and make sure I understand what we're talking about. Typically, our referrals are the pretty standard response. 
Uh, when I took a look, look at this one, I actually saw, uh, based on the aerial, that there were a lot of accessory structures on property. So I referred it down to Michelle, and Michelle took a look, and ZBA staff took a look, and it turns out that there were a number of um, accessory structures on the site uh, that originally, when this was submitted to us with the, the um, material that you saw, uh, would have had them exceed the 1,500 square foot maximum for <coughs> accessory structures. Um, it turns out that that has been revised, and they're, um, the, uh, the amount that they're exceeding that 1,500 square feet of roofed area is now, uh, I think, even higher, I believe. Um, anyway, this amended an amended application. Uh, I think the zoning enforcement officer also found some other outstanding issues with the property that needed to be looked at. The building inspector, I believe, went out or is going out to take a look at what's going on. So there are a number of issues that kind of came up um, related to this. Uh, they're now applying for a variance for 14 foot rear yard setback, uh, 435 square foot variance for an accessory dwelling, and 2,406 and a half square foot variance for total accessory structures. How many square foot? 2,406 and a half over, and the, half. over the 1,500 that are permitted. And what um, is the first one? As well as the uh, um, five accessory structures. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I can pull it up. That, that's kind of relative, isn't it? I don't think it's all that big. <laughs> well, 100, 100 acres is big. No, it's not that big. No, it was six, just over six acres. Okay. Yeah. So what we have is is this structure, if you can see my little mouse on the screen, that they're proposing to turn into an accessory <coughs> structure. Uh, there's a playhouse over here. There's an existing barn over here. There's apparently a shed over here. There's a greenhouse here. There's another accessory structure here. So all in all, they have a number of things they're now going to the ZBA for. Um, so I noticed those, I, I refer to them, they're being taken care of, and I think everything is being handled as it needs to be. Uh, I think the planning board needs to decide what kind of response we want to submit back. I, don't know if we, I guess we need a response. Is this still on the agenda? Correction, do we know? I never heard for sure. I think that's still kind of a question. Okay. For the ZBA? I think so. Based on what we can. Sorry, I'm sorry. My input was going to be to understand their, their number of issues and the number, the number of variances that have been requested, and um, we refer to the ZBA to use their judgment in the application and refer back if necessary, something to that effect. It really isn't much for us to do other than recognize that there are a number of issues, well, we under, and we understand they're being worked on. Um, I don't have any position to comment. Or, or not in a position, yeah, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, I don't think I'm in a position to comment. I don't know about other than what you just shared, which I believe to be true, but it, it seems like this is one of those situations where you have to go and look. I mean, it could be that this many accessory dwellings, the way it works, and it's not a problem on the site plan. It's, it's valid said. Is, is, is the main criteria for accessory structures? The planning board is asked to make a recommendation <coughs> to the CBA. And we haven't gone to the site. We have no idea how this all looks. No. The CBA will go. Who sent them to the CBA? Planning board? Who sent them to the CBA? Zoning administrator. Zoning administrator. Zoning administrator. Zoning administrator. Zoning administrator. Sent, sent it to us. No, the CBA. No, CBA. 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 And they're on the agenda so I made it's more in front of them than our business. opinion about what's coming in front of them. But they said it to us before all these other things came up. Mm -hmm. And Gretchen said they are still on the agenda. And it says before variances. And there are apparently a couple of COs in the seat too. Yeah, that's... Well, I recommend we get all that information together. Yeah. That's my recommendation to them. <laughs> and, um... From a planning standpoint, we're in a position to say whether or not there's a, there could be planning issues at this point, given the information or the lack of information that we currently have. Would that be, would that be fair? Okay. Uh, we're going to have a resolution to effect that having reviewed the information given the planning board feels we do not have sufficient information to determine whether there are any planning issues related to the variance requests for this project, and therefore we would like to defer making any recommendation to the ZBA until we receive further information that we feel is adequate to make a reasoned uh, recommendation. Something like that. 
Can I have a motion to approve? So, Second. Just a, a question. The way that's phrased, that doesn't stop the ZDA from right. proceeding. Neither does our recommendation. They can yeah. not accept our recommendation. Right. Right. Stands as a recommendation. He basically says handle it. So, for a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, anything further? Could I hear a motion to dismiss? Motion. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're good to go. Thank you all very much. <coughs> Thank you. I got a question for you.